Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear, maker of tough mother jeans and Columbia Interchange System jackets. Looks like a beautiful day in Boulder for the Buffaloes and the Wildcats. We're back here after the game with the Residence Inn Scoreboard Show. Mike Tirico joins these guys at halftime. Kansas State tries to become the giant killer for the second consecutive week. Colorado tries to write another chapter in the Cinderella season. Let's go to Ron Franklin in Boulder. Thanks, Chris. Tonight, from Folsom Field, another chapter unfolds in Colorado's charm season, and maybe another step toward a destiny as storied and solid as the Rockies that framed this landscape. There's nobody in the world that can stop us. I mean, that's just the kind of confidence that we have in ourselves. anybody, any kind of want to play, they can come to post them. Myself, I'm, I'm going outside with a real big attitude, a big chip on my shoulder. And I think this entire offense is a heroic type offense. I mean, because you can't say one guy. It's a unit. You know, it's, it's togetherness. It's team. against the number three ranked Buffaloes of Colorado, who are six and oh. Hi everybody, Rod Franklin, and welcome once again to CFA Primetime. This is a tough ticket because it's been family day here in Boulder and not a ducat to be had. And another reason they're here is to watch this mad dash for the national championship by the Buffaloes at Colorado. Now I know for you people in the East in the Big Ten Conference, you say Penn State is the number one team in the nation. But folks, if you're from this school, an alumnus, or you're just from the area, you think that the Colorado Buffaloes, when you look at their schedule and Mike Godfrey, the way they've handled some very tough teams, that they should in fact be the number one team in the nation. And actually, they have a decent argument. Let's talk about all the wealth of talent that they have on offense, Mike. We normally pick out one star to talk about. You could reach in a hat and pull a name because they have so many on this offensive unit. If you're K-State, what name do you pull out? Who do you have to stop tonight? Ron, they have everything. You're right. Cordell Stewart, at quarterback, he can run or pass and run the option. They got Rasan Salam as a tailback run inside or outside. They got Westbrook on the outside that can go one-on-one. -on -one. They got Borea inside to tight end. So what do you do? I think what you have to do is you have to take one dimension away. And the dimension I think you have to take away is the running game. You got to at least try to slow it down by playing eight in the box. You must stop the running game. Hope your corners can hold up against Westbrook on the outside. Mike, I don't know how many of people in our audience have watched K-State play this year, but they have a young man at quarterback by the name of Chad May that I think operates his offense as well as anybody does in the country. Ron, he's an accurate thrower and he has a very strong arm, but where he's the most dangerous is when he scrambles out of the pocket. They'll try to move him around quite a bit tonight. Last year in the game with Colorado, he made three throws scrambling around that really set up the tie, 16-16 tie against Colorado. Mike, speaking of Chad May, the third member of our broadcast team, Mike Adamley, files this report in a little different situation. Here's Mike. Because of their son's exploits on the football field, there is probably no more celebrated recreational vehicle in America than the one belonging to Jim and Marla May. Today's destination, Boulder, Colorado, another stop on the Kansas State football tour. And Jim, I know this has had to be a blast for you and your wife. Yes, it has, Mike. We spent the last five weeks in Manhattan. Chad has been a great inspiration to the both of us. Now we're here in Colorado and we're out to beat the Buffaloes. Go Kansas State. Well, up ahead, Folsom Field. They're playing the Kansas State fight song. Hey, we better find a place to park this thing. Honey, step on it. With a support system like these two, is it any wonder that Chad May is a success? This is fun. What do these women think about the new Sicilian-style pizza from Pizza Hut? Wow, they love it! New Sicilian-style pizza from Pizza Hut. Basil, oregano, garlic baked right in for a pizza crust like never before for only $8.99. Don't miss Goodyear's Big Tire Sale and 25% savings on four of our most popular radials for passenger cars and light trucks. But you gotta hurry. The Big Tire Sale ends November 5th at participating Goodyear retailers. 
this shop is very much different now. Before, customers told us what they wanted. We have people up on the drive that greet them as soon as they come in. Their car is written up within a few minutes, and once we get the repair order in hand, we get a pretty good idea where to go and what we're looking for. The top priority is fix it right the first time on time. Quality care standards, it must work pretty good. We get letters, cards, a handshake now and then. You know, people let us know. This is what they want. Quality care people, quality care standards at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. Now, there are very few places in this country that are any more beautiful than the landscape here and, of course, this time of year. Bill Snyder would think it was even more gorgeous if he can maintain what's happened. When you look, his first season, 1-10, and 30-19-1 and one since then. And for Bill McCartney, much the same story. In fact, his first three years, Bill really floundered. 7-25-1, and one, but look at since then. 72, almost 73%, winning 81 ball games. Headgears go high in the air on the sideline, as I mentioned. Parents weekend here at Folsom Field at, uh, at Colorado as Neil Voskovichian gets ready to kick it off. Nicknamed Kovorkian by his uh, teammates because some couldn't pronounce it. Leon Edwards and J.J. Smith back at a dual safety, and we're set to go. It's going to be J.J. Smith from the goal line. Smith runs into his own man and then will pick up five more yards. 25 yards on the return, and now the starting lineups brought to you by Russell Athletic. Now, we know how good Chad May is at quarterback, but you're going to see one of the best all-purpose guys around tonight. In fact, you just saw him. J.J. Smith catches well, runs well. Wide receivers. This is a very good group. Kevin Lockett is the big play guy, but Tyson Swagger, possession type receiver, and extremely consistent. Both tackles on the offensive line. They have played well. Jim Himalewski probably doesn't get as much attention as he deserves. But they swing it out, and this is J.J. Smith. And this is what I'm talking about. He is what you would call a third down kind of back, and he's close to the first down. Let's check the starters on defense for the Colorado Buffaloes. All three of these guys are extremely talented up front. But Clavel, last week, 12 tackles, two sacks against Oklahoma. Active group at linebacker, Ted Johnson, always seems to be around the ball. He had 14 tackles up at Michigan. Now, this could be a problem tonight. We will keep an eye on number 47. Chris Hudson is the leader in the backfield, but he has a turf toe. And if he has to go to the sideline, his replacement, Mike, is a freshman by the name of Elton Davis. Second and short. May going to go long, and he's got him wide open. Brown. And Brown will take it to the CU 40-yard line. Ron, when you look at this football game tonight, the matchup all belongs to number five here, Chad May. He has to have a big night for Kansas State to win this football game or for even to stay close because they don't have much of a running game. Their running game will be little short runs, little short shovel draws, but Chad May is a quarterback. Bill McCartney said reminds him a lot of Trent Dilfer. Mike, in the formation, they come out in now, four wide receivers, and they go shotgun with Chad May. It's a draw play. J.J. Smith, oh, what a nice play at the line of scrimmage by Kerry Hicks, the junior out of Salt Lake City. He is on the ground, and if J.J. Smith gets by him, there's big yardage downfield. I think J.J. Smith really misread this and tried to tried to cut back a little bit, but you see Kerry Hicks just destroy the block. There really is no place for J.J. Smith to go after a second look. Kerry Hicks is the kind of nose guard that controls the inside running game. It was Ross Greenwood who was trying to block on him. And the sophomore out of Fayetteville, Arkansas, sees the play go for a loss of one. This pass, zinged it wide open, another first down at the 28. This is Mitch running. He's a junior out of Iowa, Decorah, Iowa. The strength of this Kansas State football team is throwing the football, and the weakness so far of the Colorado defense is against the pass. You see passing yardage per game. Kansas State averaging 242. Colorado allowing that. If you've just walked into your living room, we are just underway. 13 
minutes, 30 seconds left in this opening quarter. And the Wildcats have been convincing in this opening drive so far. This running play will go for very short yardage as Ted Johnson hits Smith and knocks him down after a gain of one. Ron Chad May came to this program, Kansas State from Fullerton College out in California. The year before they dropped football, they went to the wishbone offense. Now you have a quarterback like Chad May, you still decide to go to the wishbone. The offensive coordinator at Fullerton called Kansas State and he transferred to Kansas State in the year after they dropped football. But can you imagine running the wishbone when you have a drop back quarterback like Chad May? <laughs> He's got a second down right now. Liam Meaty was shaken up a little bit for, uh, for CU on that last play. Blitz to the outside. Going to throw long. He's got him open. It is Mitch running again, and that is good. For the K-State first down, it is first and goal for the Wildcats. Well, when you blitz a quarterback, you better make sure you get to him because when you don't get to Chad May, this is what's going to happen. Chad May against the blitz. You see the blitz coming from the outside. Greg Jones. Chad May wisely stepped up in the pocket, hit Mitch running just in front of Chris Hudson on the outplay. And uh, I'll tell you, Kansas State's off and running with a good drive. And Mike, they have really been throwing to Hudson's side. I don't know if they saw something or if that was just the game plan. We know, Ron, I'll tell you, the first thing that comes to mind when you look at the way the schedule set, you know who Colorado plays next week, the big game versus Nebraska. And as a coach, all week you could preach about, you better get ready for Kansas State. But in the fans' mind and the newspaper people and everybody, they're thinking Nebraska. But they better get their attention on Kansas State quickly. see what they've done. They're inside the 20. In fact, the first and goal. 23 possessions, 16 touchdowns, four field goals. Pretty darn good efficiency. 20 of 23. That's Schiller, the fullback, spins off a tackle and he's down to the four. Now, did they really cross him up there because they took J.J. Smith out with three wide receivers and put in a fullback? I think everybody in the ballpark thought it was going to be a throw that they figured they had to throw the ball in. But again, they give Chad May a lot of room at the line of scrimmage to change plays. He's a veteran. He's a senior. He's 6'2", 220. He knows the offense. He calls protections at the line of scrimmage. He knows what the offense is all about. They got it away quickly. Schiller again at the one-yard line, and he's going to be tripped up there by Perry Hicks almost into the end zone. Hicks got a piece of him just enough, and Schiller, who was a senior out of Sherman, Texas, gets knocked down at the one, and we are being told that Liam Meaty is down again. He was shaken up three plays ago, and number three, the junior out of Pango Pango American Samoa, is going to have to come out of the lineup because the trainers are out to look him over. Ron, you, you, when you play Kansas State, you see two different styles. Kansas University a couple weeks ago played zone defense and sat back, and Chad May had some success. Nebraska last week blitzed him and knocked him down, sacked him six times, knocked him down nine times. Really, Nebraska started working on him in spring practice because he had so much success the year before. They brought some pro coaches in, talked to them, formulated the game plan, and blitzed him from all over the ballpark. This is the ninth play of the drive. Third down and goal. J.J. Smith, can he turn the corner? Yes, touchdown, Kansas State. Brian Loika, number 80, really sustained a block, which you have to block on the sweep play. Credit that touchdown with a great block by Brian Loika, number 80. Mike, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I am really impressed with that opening drive. I mean, this is not chicken soup they're coming in here to play against, and they just marched it right down the field. Well, if you're going to beat these guys, you're going to have to score a lot of points because their offense, Colorado's, is going to put a lot of points on the board. Agreed. Romanica to attempt the extra point. So J.J. Smith gets a breather, but not after scoring, and his Wildcats on top, 7 to nothing. where Russell Athletic, because it's made tough, it has to be. Hey, kid! Hey, you got my lucky jersey. Yeah? I got kind of carried away. Can I have it back? You gotta be kidding. Come here, you little piss -weed. Get off my back. No. You want athletic wear that can survive anything? 
can't do us a lot, buddy. Getting tough. Who was that kid? I don't know. Let's sign him up. To keep tabs on your engine, look here. To keep tabs on your budget, look here. You always save money at Walmart. Save every day on Pennzoil Performax Synthetic Motor Oil. It flows in the cold and keeps cool in the heat. So it protects to the max. And that keeps things right where they should be. And because we're always working at Walmart to save you money, you'll find our prices are right where they should be. Always low prices, always Walmart. After Automobile Magazine named Plymouth Neon Automobile of the Year, there just isn't a lot left to say. of Saturday Night CFA is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And by Russell Athletic for really tough athletic wear that can survive anything. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Well, I would imagine there's some folks in Manhattan, Kansas that are cheering just like that young lady because of this drive. Nine plays. 75 yards. Three minutes and 37 seconds used. And look at May's numbers. Four of four, 66. And then J.J. Smith on the one-yard return. Mike, that's the first touchdown on an opening drive that anybody has been able to throw in the end zone this year. Texas and Northeast Louisiana both scored on opening drives, but they were field goals. But the first time that anybody has put a touch against the Buffaloes, first time they had the football. Troutman and Kidd back in the duel. Safety as Collins will kick it off for K-State. This is Kidd from the goal line. Ron, there was three really good blocks. First of all, the tight end is going to get a good block. Loika, then the motion man is going to get a good block. Then the fullback will get a good block. Three key blocks. Watch the tight end at the top of the screen. Loika with a good block. Now a good block by number 48. Lachele, and then the fullback, Diedrich Kelly with the block, and J.J. Smith into the end zone. There's Leica right there. You did that well, Michael. A lot of lines. Thank you from Louisiana. Play action. First pass. Zips it complete. Ray Peru. Take a look at the starters. Cordell Stewart just threw the pass, but the man, Rashawn Salam, he says, I don't want all this credit, but boy, he's leading the nation in rushing and he's going to lead on a lot of ballots as far as Heisman Trophy. Wide receivers, Michael Westbrook. Just 20 yards per catch. He is really dynamite. And what a talented group up front. And the man in the middle, Brian Stoltenberg, has averaged out the most consistent blocker two of the last three games. Started since he was a freshman. carry for him and he'll be spun around by Tim Colston and Tim's the first man we're going to talk about tonight of the down for the defensive tackles have had the biggest impact at K-State Colston is a big play guy two and a half year starter the linebackers will Purcell Gaskins what a great athlete the NCAA high jump champion 1993 and then the secondary Chuck Marlowe he's the leader normally plays free safety and Mike they're going to move him over to strong safety this evening play into the boundary and this is what Salon does best. Mario Smith finally will gather him in all the way down at the 36 yard line. Ron, when you play against Colorado, the man who's going to have the longest night and the toughest night is number 28, Steve Hanks. When you're the free safety and you're playing a lot of eight men front, you see the angle he takes now to make the play, but he stays alive here and keeps it open until he gets helped by Mario Smith. But number 28 cannot fight too quick. He has to stay in center field. If they find him coming up in those lanes quickly, they're going to throw a post pattern behind him. He stepped out of bounds, and it is a gain of nine. If you watch it from behind. Pressure. Cardell Stewart gets up and is going to be hit. Incomplete was the pass, and it's Oaks who was applying the pressure on Cordell. 
Now why run number 44 also hit him. But Kansas State defensive plan as they start this game is to crowd the line of scrimmage with eight defensive players. They're going to force Colorado into throwing the football. Now, they're going to try to keep them guessing. They're going to go from an eight-man front, looks like, to a seven-man front. Just try to keep moving to try to keep Colorado and Cordell Stewart off balance. Option boy to Stewart take a shot. Salon cuts it up, breaks it, he's going to score. We'll count it off. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Buffalo. Devastating. Seven yards over on first down, over seven yards on second down, and over seven on third down. Extra point attempt. He hit the upright and went through. <laughs> Talked about Steve Hanks a couple of plays ago. He has to make plays from that safety position, and he has to take the right angles. He cannot get caught up inside. See, he bought too much time there and got caught up inside. Now the ball's kicked out to Rashawn Salon, and there's no one outside. He'll break one tackle. There's Joe Gordon with the shot at him, misses him. Now there's no one else back there because Steve Hanks took an inside angle. Well, Joe Gordon is one of the most talented players they have in that secondary. I also, Mike, you could tell on that second replay that Cordell Stewart is going to say, hooray, we scored the touchdown, but he doesn't want to get hit like that, too. He really took a shot as they were pinching in very quickly on him. But see, that's, that's their hidden agenda in this offense because they can run the option. Their power pass, but they got the option because Cordell Stewart can run the football. Secondary being talked to on the sideline. Now that this is any indication, we have barely played five minutes. Five minutes and one second, and we've got 14 points on the board. Slipping to kick it off for Colorado. And J.J. Smith, two yards deep, they'll return it. Seven yards, and they only needed a minute and 14 seconds. Salam, three rushes, 66 yards of the touchdown run, 53. Well, coming into the game, he led the nation in three categories. Average per game, also in all-purpose yards, and in points at 16 per game. Chad May. His offense took it right down the field. Nine plays, 75 yards the first time they touched it. See if they can do it again. Ball is loose, still loose, recovered by K-State just across the 20-yard line. Shannon Cavell, one of the first men there. Hicks also applying pressure. Greenwood wound up on the football. Ron, they're going to have trouble blocking Kerry Hicks all evening. Here's number 92, Shannon Clavell on an inside move. And the pressure again, Mike Phillips, number 97. But they're going to have to have help on number 94, Kerry Hicks. You see them doubling him here because he really outweighs Jason Johnson. Has an advantage in quickness on Jason Johnson. Back into the short side of the field. J.J. Smith going to take it all the way out to the 38-yard line. Mike, to continue your point, Jason Johnson also is only a sophomore. Not only is he undersized, as offsides is called against Colorado. But you've got to also remember, 
Quentin New Year started 45 straight football games for K-State at that position. So they have nobody who has any experience, and it makes it extremely difficult on this young man. And he was a tight end, Ron. You're right. Yeah. He was a tight end when he came into the program. So, And when you put him one-on-one -on -one against Kerry Hicks, Kerry Hicks is going to win that battle. You have to get him some help. And then last time, you could see that Oltman's, the right guard, stayed in with him and tried to help him work against Kerry Hicks. J.J. Smith, a little dance step at the line of scrimmage, but dancing into his uh, dance card quickly was Matt Russell, and he will knock him down. Ron, we just talked about you have to double Kerry Hicks, but when you double Kerry Hicks, look at number 16, Ted Johnson. Uh, Matt Russell, number 16, steps up as a linebacker. There's no one to block him because you're on a one-back offense, so Kerry Hicks really opens it up for his linebackers, Matt Russell and Ted Johnson. We're tied at seven, just under eight and a half minutes left in this opening quarter. It is a second down, K-State. And he takes the draw play, zings the pass, and it is caught. And he was really being struck. Ron Brown held on to it. Brown is only 5'7", 160 pounds. But it's the fastest man on this K-State team. Ron, if you're going to throw the football, your receivers have to make tough catches. And Ron Brown just made a tough catch. Donnell Liamidi, hey, oh, number can... three for Colorado, is going to strike him. But Ron Brown, look at the concentration as he catches that football. He knows he's going to get hit, still holds on to the football. yards, J.J. Smith, and then he goes backwards. Russell, the first man, and then Ted Johnson, who, as we mentioned in the lineup, always seems to be around the football, came up to help him out. You know how I talk all week that you've got to run the football. If you're going to win the game, you got to run the football. In K-State situation tonight, I don't think running the football is all that important. I think they can win the game throwing the football, just keeping Colorado honest with some runs so that they can't put their ears back and just come after Chad May. Latchelet comes to the ball game to join Loika at tight end. Pressure from the outside. And now he is going to be sacked back at the 47-yard line. And Mike Tirico, let's hear from you for the first time this evening. How are you, my friend? Pretty good, Ron, but uh, not as good as the Southern Cal fans. The Trojans trying to stay within a half game of Arizona in the Pac-10, getting it done. Ken Gray. A 75-yard punt return against Cal, who would later set up a touchdown that has the Trojans up 28-0 midway through the second. Ron. 28 to nothing. Very impressive beginning there by the Trojans. Offensively, we got an impressive opening here. Mike tied at seven in the 6.40 left to play opening quarter. Had a lot of players trying to get the home folks involved in this one. Here they come with a corner blitz and a shovel pass. It's a great call. And look at the play by Ted Johnson. If he doesn't make the tackle, it might have gone for six. It was an excellent call. And you're right, Ted Johnson was able to ward off the block and make the play on J.J. Smith. But that's a linebacker's play. He has to make that play. You're going to see the linebacker number 46 first take a step. Now get away from the block and make the play. And you're right. There's nobody else there to stop J.J. Smith if Ted Johnson doesn't make the play. Eric Hardy on fourth down. And as Chris Hudson drops off in a single safety for Colorado. Hudson makes the catch. No fair catch, and he's going to be tackled at the 10-yard line. Chris Canty, the redshirt freshman out of Voorhees, New Jersey, makes the tackle. So, Ellen emails Peter that Cove of Aphrodite Part 2 is ready. Peter says Part 1 sold 810 copies. He'll have to think about it. Then Reggie emails Peter that Nicole St. Germain's agent will be in Friday. Peter immediately writes back that uh, he doesn't feel he needs to come in Fridays anymore. Then Curtis, the current man, Bruno, emails me an offering of a personal nature. I love that delete key. where you'll need to be. 
But if your battery is more than three years old, it could fail this winter. Before you're stranded, get the next generation of Die Hard. Here's proof exclusive new technology creates the most powerful, longest lasting Die Hard ever. How many starch does your battery have left? Better use one to get to Sears. For the next generation of Die Hard batteries, don't trust your family to anything less. So, Nikki, any plans now that high school's over? You know, it's gonna work for me. <laughs> Not if you're smart. Well, you know what I think you should do? Stay close to home. You got plenty of time to work. Take the first thing that comes along there. Give Anthony a call. So, what are you gonna do? Well, we study nuclear propulsion, satellite navigation. In the Navy. Oh, great. Way to go, Nikki. For more information on the high tech skills that can help launch a career, call 1 800 USA Navy. Next Saturday at 7, Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs battle the Florida Gators, only on ESPN. Defensive discussions going on on the sideline. The man in the middle there is uh, Ted Johnson, the senior out of Carlsbad, California. And it, he is off to another really good start in this football game tonight. The, one, of the, one of the real spearheads as far as this Colorado defense and what makes him go. Well, here's the other thing that makes him go. This, this offense that averages almost seven yards every time they snap the ball. Could be a face mask there as he goes for a couple. Salam goes down, and it's Gaskins on the stop. Where Cordell Stewart will look at, when he looks at the Kansas State defense, he wants to find number 21, Chuck Marlowe, because he's the one that will give him the eight-man front. Now, there's eight men in the box here. And they're going to try to stop the running game. But the key for Cordell Stewart will be where will Chuck Marlowe, number 21, line up? Will he line up inside to give him the eight-man front? Or will we be in the secondary giving him a seven-man front? Cordell Stewart, five-step drop this time. Can't find anybody. Now rolls it out and throws it short. James Kidd was the man in the vicinity. So he checked off, Ron. He looked out. He seen Chuck Marlowe lined up on the line of scrimmage. So he checked off to a pass. The numbers on Stewart almost 67 percent. 1194 yards, seven touchdowns, and two interceptions. Just under five to play. Opening quarter. 7-all. K-State and Colorado. Pressure up the middle. Runs away from it and zips it complete. Guess who? Westbrook. Somebody better get a hold on it. Wyron finally makes the stop. There's some good receivers in the country this year. You got Joey Galloway, you got J.J. Stokes, there's a lot of other ones, but I don't know if there's anybody as good as Michael Westbrook, number 81. Cordell Stewart really makes this play with a scrambling ability, but when you have 6'4", 210-pound Michael Westbrook, pretty good target for you to be able to go to. He stayed alive here. Chucky Marlowe working inside of him. You see his hand up, trying to get the attention of Cordell Stewart. Makes the catch, and then the strength of his running ability picks up a few extra yards. Mike, there's some bad news right now that uh, Derek West, the big uh, senior right tackle, is being helped off the field. 6'8", 285, out of Arvada, Colorado. And Kyle Smith. He was a sophomore of Torrington, Wyoming, number 52, will come into the ball game and replace West. And we'll get a report on him just as soon as we can. Option back into the short side of the field and nicely played by K-State. And Purcell Gaskins, along with Chuck Marlowe, combining on the tackle outside. Chuck Marlowe had 19 tackles last week in the Nebraska game. Tough, strong safety for him. He's out of Youngstown Cardinal Mooney High School. Jamie Mendez, their consensus All-American, was out of that same high school. Bobby Stoops, Mike Stoops, both defensive coaches went to the high school. So they got a pipeline to Don Butchie's uh, football power there in Ohio. 
Keller Green is in the ballgame with defensive tackle. Harvard had been shaken up coming into this one. As the pitch comes wide, it's Salam out of bounds, but he'll have the first down just across the 46-yard line by Fogel. This is the most that Colorado started out running the option, but K-State has really given them the option to the short side of the field. What I mean, giving it to them by alignment. They're giving them some things here, trying to take away some other things. Rashawn Salam into the boundary. They've got to get somebody in into the boundary to take the pitch, man. And now Kelly Green has gone out of the lineup, and Ray Eagle has come in replacing him. As we mentioned, Darrell Harbert had a back strain, and they didn't know how much he was going to be able to play tonight. protection by Colorado. Ball is locked in. Fourier has it complete at the 25-yard line. You talk about weapons now. You got the weapon on the outside. You got the weapon on the inside. Salam. And you have a tight end in Christian Fourier that not only can block and is one of the best blocking tight ends in the country, but he's going to make these type of catches for you against Chucky Marlowe. Tight end versus a strong safety. Christian Fourier wins this bout. 6'4", 235. And, of course, he is a senior. Option the other direction. And Cordell Stewart knocked down at the 18-yard line by Purcell Gaskins. Well, they just come at you with so many weapons. And then you, you need a quarterback in this offense that can do both things, run and pass, and Cordell Stewart can do that. Bill McCartney told us the other day he's playing with a lot of confidence. It's hard to sack him, and he doesn't turn the football over. I mean, look at these numbers. 30 of 31 possessions, 26 touchdowns, and four field goals for Colorado. I think if I'm a defensive coordinator, I have to think that when they go on offense, that someone puts the game into fast forward because it just seems to be going quicker than you can handle or that you can maintain. And now Stewart wants to call a timeout. Barely got it before the 25-second clock went out, so we'll take it with him. So I said to Henny, Henny, of course chickens are more important to hooters than owls. Who? Chickens, that's who. I beg to differ. Well, pig all you want. Without chickens, there'd be no chicken sandwiches or chicken salad. <laughs> or Hooters famous chicken wings. There'd be no Hooters if it weren't for chicken, chicken, chicken. Uh, it's really not wise to even argue the point. <laughs> that's because I'm wrong. No, that's because you're not going to be around long anyway. Ah! Chicken. Body benefits when you experience the physical and mental benefits of L.A. Spas. Over 50 models all designed to give you complete stress relief and mental relaxation. Feel the difference an L.A. Spa makes, like thousands of fingers massaging your knees to your neck. Or imagine six hands massaging your back, blasting away pain and tightness. All for around $10 a month and built expressly for you by L.A. Spas. So relax. Established dominance, the bighorn sheep gather every fall in the upper pastures. Squaring off from one another, they recoil on their powerful legs and smash heads with such force that the sound can be heard for miles across the valley. Battles such as these will continue throughout the season, determining control of this hard-fought piece of turf. The Canadian Football League on ESPN2. It's wild. Almost clear skies here in Boulder, just a few wispy clouds around, and it's some gorgeous weather here. Uh, no rain uh, the last few days. On this drive right here, started at their own tent, seven plays, 72 yards, and they have used two minutes and 59 seconds. Great weekend for Parents Weekend. Cordell Stewart, the senior out of Marrero, Louisiana, brings them up at a second down and three. again into the short side of the field and he gets tagged by Gaskin. Ron Cordell Stewart's mother died when he was 11 years old. He's really close to his father. His father's a barber and Cordell Stewart said the other day that he's going to open the Hail Mary Barber Shop someday <laughs> in Louisiana. 6'3", 210-pound quarterback. Quite a leader for Bill McCartan. Still the situation, third down. They need about a yard. Not to go under two minutes in this opening quarter. So 
the line. First and goal, Colorado Buffaloes at the eight. One back team sometimes run into a little trouble, but all of a sudden now Bill McCartney puts Leon Merritt, a tight end fullback, into the game to give you a little lead blocker in a close short yardage situation. They pick up the first down. Now timeout has been called by Kansas State. 7-7. We'll be right back. This technology is miraculous. Ever since our head of sales, Curtis the Curt Man Bruno, put our catalog online, he hasn't bothered me once. What's the latest with Darlene? Oh, forget that. Check this out. I can get our entire winter catalog out to 2,000 bookstores just like that. And you press this button, you get an entire summary of the book. Just like that. Interactive. Cool. Uh-huh. I love technology. <laughs> Former football great Joe Theismann for Motrin IV. Believe me, after 15 seasons as a pro quarterback, I didn't opt for the early retirement plan. But hey, I still love to compete. And I still get sore. That's when I take Motrin IV. Clinical tests prove that two Motrin IV work better than two extra strength Tylenol. And Motrin IV is the same Motrin doctors prescribe, but in non-prescription strength. I'm not about to take this retirement business lying down. Motrin IV. It's fast, it's powerful. For me, it's the one that works. Even with special rates, there's one expense most hotels can't eliminate. Handouts. Ten dollars to Tony for parking the car, fiver for Wanda the waitress, and two dollars for... Stop it! For Rudy the valet. Thank you. Rudy valet. <laughs> what are the odds? At Red Roof Inns, we'd rather save you all that money. Oh, and we also throw in a really clean, comfortable room. Avoid handouts. Hit the roof. Red Roof Inns. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF. Now, here's a tip that I learned from the IRS. Well, there's good news for Buffalo fans. That hulking figure, number 72, Derek West, back in the ballgame. All 6'8 and 285 pounds of him. He's still hobbling just a little bit on that uh, left ankle. Touchdown, Buffalo. Touchdown. And Tim Holston. Colston, the, uh, the junior out of Tampa, number 92 for K-State, got upset about something that happened in the fray. I don't know if he got hit by an orange or what. Vastoricchia knocks home the extra point. And it is 14 to 7 Colorado. And let's uh, check in with Mike Adamley. Mike, what do you have for us, buddy? Well, Ron, you hit it on the head in the opening of the show. Fans here in Boulder do think the Buffalo should be ranked number one because look at the mountain they've had to climb. First, it was 10th ranked Wisconsin. The folks got there. The week later, the Hail Mary over then ranked number four Michigan. Texas was 15th when the Buffs beat them. Two weeks later, number 22 Oklahoma fell. And tonight, it's number 19, K-State. Of course, everybody looking ahead to the Big 8 showdown next Saturday against Nebraska. Winner obviously going on to the Orange Bowl. But based on strength of schedule, you'd have to say that the Buffaloes certainly have had a tougher road to hoe than, say, Auburn, Penn State, or Nebraska. Mike? Well, I don't think there's any doubt, Mike, that uh, Bill McCartney's team has played the toughest schedule. Ron, I believe you'd agree, yeah. than anybody in the country right now. And they beat all comers. So, And then, of course, if they continue to win this ball game, they beat another ranked team. And then they meet Nebraska, a top-five team next week. So uh, it'd be hard to move somebody ahead of them, I believe. Adamley, I loved your report. I do have to say, those have to be non-union musicians. <laughs> Sledden is going to kick it off again for the Buffaloes. They're on top 14 to 7. Last two times they've touched it, they have scored with it. J.J. Smith is the deep man standing at the goal line for the Wildcats. And five yards deep, he won't try to return this one. Ron, here you look.
looking at Penn State, a very fine football team, 6-0, beat Minnesota, Southern Cal, and Iowa football team has struggled a little bit, a Rutgers team, Temple, and then last week, of course, the big win in Michigan. So I think when you look at that schedule compared to Colorado's, I don't think there's any doubt Colorado's schedule is tougher to this point, and there's still a lot of football to play. Yeah, there is a lot. As you look, it looks like Stewart is being checked over, maybe retaped on that uh, right ankle. Edwards on the draw play. Five. Has ten. Still fighting his way. He'll go for 11 yards. Ted Johnson finally put him to the turf. They almost had disaster on this play because a bad snap to Chad May. And Kerry Hicks is lined up on that center, Jason Johnson, and really giving him trouble. But Chad May really was able to play like a shortstop and dig that one out of the dirt. Mike, did you see Leon Johnson when he went into the huddle? He is only 5'6". May, of course, is almost 6'3", and he towers over him as they stand together again in that shotgun formation. Incomplete pass at the 39-yard line. Kevin Lockett is... Well, coming up tomorrow, noon Eastern time, it's NFL game day. They will uh, discuss the Raiders offensive uh, power struggle and also a compelling look at uh, post concussion syndrome and then at seven o'clock nfl primetime chris berman robert roberts and tom jackson for wall to ball highlights all tomorrow on espn Procedure against K-State. Let's go back to Mike Adam. Well, Mike Godfrey, you mentioned that Kansas State needs to match Colorado's touchdown for touchdown to stay in this game. But they need to do it with long, sustained drives. Those short and medium-range passes that Chad Mays throws two and a half weeks ago against Kansas. They can roll the ball for over 40 min minutes, and that made a big difference. Of course, tonight, I don't know the way Colorado scores in about 30 seconds. It may not matter time of possession. I don't know if time of possession is so important, but I know this. They better score some points because Colorado, every time they get the ball, is going to march the length of the field. Blitz from the corner. James a pass and has it complete. Uh, it's Swagger this time. Tyson with his first catch of the night. You were talking about the size of Leon Edwards, 5'6", 165. He really picked up a good block on Mike Phillips, a 6'3", 210-pound linebacker, after he was after the ball was faked to him. So a little Leon Edwards really with a pretty good block. Look at the right of your screen, number 20. 165 pounds blocking a 210-pound linebacker. Took him to his knees. You know what? Every coach talks about get low on the block. He starts low. <laughs> Hard for him to get high. He's, uh, he's pad under pad from the start. <laughs> Third down, nine to make the 41. Here they come with that again, and it's with a draw play. And Edwards cannot get out of the grasp of Darius Hall. The strength of this Colorado football team is their three down linemen on defense. Kerry Hicks, Darius Holland, and Shannon Cobell. One of the linebackers out to congratulate uh, Holland on the tackle that he made. That's the end of the first quarter with our score. Colorado 14 and K-State 7. Since 1984, I've bought 13 minivans from the Chrysler Corporation. My Plymouth Voyager has 186,000 miles on it. I just bought a Dodge Caravan to keep it company. I traded a Jeep Cherokee with 292,000 miles for a new Grand Cherokee. Both are the finest. I put all my trust in Dodge vehicles and wouldn't buy anything else. For the past 11 years, we've only owned Chrysler vehicles. Vision is my first American car in 15 years. The performance is exceptional. I had a Nissan Maxima. My Concord is a superior vehicle. It seems our owners let go of their 
their steering wheels just long enough to applaud. You ready? Yep. <laughs> What's this? We're playing on clay. Right back. <laughs> it's mixed double. Oh. Outdoor court. <laughs> Is active wear becoming too specialized for you? Try Discus Athletic. Heavyweight sweats and tees. Just change your clothes once. To Discus Athletic. The way America plays. Hi, welcome to Subway. Subway isn't like those fancy New York steakhouses. No stuffy Those's made or D cool. or jackets required. Great vest. Thanks. But we do have A1 steak sauce. It's on Subway's new A1 steak and cheese. Slices of tender, juicy steak topped with the great taste of A1. Plus all the fresh fixings you like. And at Subway, you don't get a big bill. You get change. Subway's new A1 steak and cheese. Appetites are required. Jackets aren't. Yeah, golf. Football. Football. Golf. Now, football. Let's watch both. Miller Lite presents Full Contact Golf. Yeah! We're still on the first hole, Bob, and this is Davis teeing it up. Here's the drive. It's blocked! Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. Oh, he's got daylight going for the green. Here's the putt. There's the putt! Oh, oh. good beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Some of the lights here at uh, Folsom Field, 14-7. Colorado leads as you look at Eric Hardy and he's about to punt it away again. Chris Hudson is back in a single safety as he awaits the punt at the 25. Turk though doesn't seem to be bothering him too much tonight. Good coverage kick. Hudson, no fair catch. Gonna make it at the 19. And he gets outside. Now let's go the other way. Well, how about the middle? <laughs> we tried them all. 50 yards in the kick and 15 on the return. Lachele made the tackle. Rashawn Salam, six rushes, 84 yards, and he was able to take the option pitch from Cordell Stewart, ramble down the sidelines, and the Heisman hopeful is off in the first quarter with a Outstanding performance here in the first quarter, Ron. Boy, did he ever. Junior out of San Diego, California. But this time they run him right up the middle. Gain of three. And speaking of games, let's check in with Mr. Tirico again. Michael, what do you have for us? Well, the next game for the Buffs, Nebraska. How did they look today? Brooke Berenger, they let him go a little bit. Three second-half touchdown passes, including Brendan Holbein's catch here, and Nebraska rolled 12th straight conference win. And a lot of folks in this part of the world already got their plans and get ready to roll their, uh, their Range Rovers and what have you, campers on up uh, in that direction. Salon, big opener. Almost broke this one. He'll take it to the 50. Eagle defensively. Ron, during recruiting uh, several years ago, Wheatley, Kajana Carter, Napoleon Coffin, all running backs were out here on a weekend visit at the same time. And of course, all three of them chose other universities. Uh, but then a year later, Rashan Salam came on the scene. So uh, when you lose some guys sometime, all of a sudden the next year you get a pretty good tailback. And I think Bill McCartney is very happy with uh, number 19, Salam. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's much question about that. It'll go for a couple. Mike Adamley. Well, Rashawn's full name is Rashawn Iman Salam. In Islamic, it means righteous faith and peace. That Islamic discipline, his faith, has made him a better football player, he says. The number 19 on his back, well, that's for his favorite football player, Eric Dickerson, the guy he emulates. He does a pretty good job of it. I mean, he's, he's a, not a pretender. He is a, a contender for that, uh, for that situation. 98 yards, he's got a touchdown. About to go over the 100-yard mark again. We 
Blitz with about 13 minutes left in the first half. Blitz, Stewart hit by Marlowe, never saw him. And he goes down back at the 44-yard line. A good defensive call by Bobby Stoops, the defensive coordinator, bringing Chucky Marlowe as a leader in the secondary. Not a lot of people were, a were after Chucky Marlowe out of high school. A lot of mid-American schools. Nobody in the Big Ten took a look at him. Here he sacks Cordell Stewart. Loss of nine in the play, so it's going to be third down. And Colorado needs to take it all the way to the K-State 40-yard line. Stewart gets by two tacklers. And you hear the groan from the crowd. He missed the first down by three yards. Canty finally came up from his cornerback spot to make the tackle. Crowd wants him to go for it. This is the position in the field. When you're on defense, you always look for the fake, always the snap to the uh, personal protector and the fake. This is the least known guy on the Colorado football team. We want to introduce you to Andy Mitchell. He just doesn't get to do this very often. And if he Andy is excited they didn't pick and up the And if he doesn't down. improve, he's not going to uh, letter this year. He needs some more time on the field. Mitch running is back in a single safety. Good kick, and it takes a power bouncer going to down it inside the five-yard line. Still rolling, and he'll touch it down at the seven. Ron, the few chances he had. Andy Mitchell with a pretty good punt. 35 yards and a kick, and there is a flag down at the four-yard line. Disregard the flag. So Hal Dobbin says disregard it, and we shall. Let's take a timeout. 11-24, left until halftime. Colorado 14, and K-State 7. What's on everybody's mind right now? Football, big guys, big thrills, big fun. But don't just think tailgate parties, think tailgate sweepstakes. Coach Kelly's tailgate sweepstakes at your participating Kelly dealer. Win a $500 gift certificate from Land's End. Hundreds will be awarded throughout the country. Now that's a grand prize you can love. Of course, so are the good deals you'll find on great Kelly tires. So get your tailgate to your Kelly dealer today and enter Coach Kelly's tailgate sweepstakes. Don't pass this one up. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, get oh, it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, I really want to do it. I'm going to take the check and let's leave it. Hey, no, 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 I am not a since the introduction of Visa Rewards, everyone wants to use their Visa card. Because now 10% of all your purchases automatically goes towards savings on American Airlines Flyaway Vacations, Carnival and Holland America Cruise Lines, and Marriott Hotels Resorts and Suites. Look at yourselves! You're acting like a bunch of kids! Besides, I saw it first. Visa Rewards. Now your Visa card's even more rewarding. At the Honda factory in Ohio, every Accord is given a bath before it's painted. A zinc phosphate bath. It helps fight rust and corrosion over the life of the car. Now, why do we go to such lengths? That's why. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Night CFA is brought to you by American Honda, who's been making quality automobiles in America for the past 11 years. And by Office Depot, taking care of business with guaranteed low prices on thousands of brand name office supplies. Welcome back to Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Mike Adamley. What a gorgeous evening here at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Glad you're with us. 14 to 7. Buffalo's on top. Draw play. And as soon as he got the football, he got Terry Hicks. Boy, the junior out of Salt Lake is playing out of his mind tonight. They can't handle Kerry Hicks. He has great ball awareness. He's hard to block one-on-one. -on -one. You almost have to double him. They try to trap him. Center block back in the left guard. Greenwood tried to block him, but he's just too quick for that blocking scheme.
Pass is caught at the 11 yard line by Kevin Lockett. That gives him a little bit of space. One of the really dangerous things when you're passing from your own end zone, of course, you get an offensive holding call back beyond that uh, goal line and you've got a safety. Ron, the defensive coordinator for Colorado is Chuck Heater, used to be at Colorado State with Earl Bruce and talked to him yesterday. Of course, Colorado State had that big game with Utah today. A lot of those players were recruited, were recruited by Earl Bruce off the Freedom Bowl, so a lot of success down the road. from the sideline. He's got it and enough for the first down. And Swagger's still fighting his way out to the 26-yard line. Ron, it's important for K-State to get the play in quick to Chad May because you see all the adjusting he does at the line of scrimmage. He moves his receivers. He calls out the protection. He takes about as much time as he can use on that 25-second and then throws the completed pass for the first down. You know, Mike, the thing you got to like about him is he not only throws the ball well, but poise under pressure, he seems to be really good. Schiller, the ball carrier, cuts it back up into the middle. He'll wind up with a gain of four. There's Darius Holland is holding on to him, senior out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. About to go under 10 minutes until halftime. K-State took the opening kickoff and went right down the field. Nine plays, 75 yards, scored the touchdown. J.J. Smith with the touchdown. Chad Mays, 9 out of 10, 116 yards. Team creeping up on the blitz, and they do come. Pass over the middle. It is intercepted at the 49 by Chris Hudson. And there is a marker down at the line of scrimmage. Let's check it first. I think it's on Colorado, Ron. So erase a spectacular athletic move by Chris Hudson. Outside. On the defense. Still second down. Nice interception by Chris Hudson. He has a turf toe coming into the game. They were not sure how much he'd play, but he's played the entire ball game so far. Yep, he really has. Look at this replay. The play that was just nullified. It's a poor throw by Chad May. go back to where we were two plays ago still going to be second down and they now need about six six and a half yards to pick up the first keep thinking maybe they'll go back to that shovel draw the play that they had there that time with J.J. Smith that Ted Johnson made the play on so you always have to worry if you're a linebacker playing against Kansas State the shovel draw with nine people at the line of scrimmage. And they're offside on the play as well. Pass is complete. Swagger and then breaks off the tackle, takes it to the 45. And let's go back to Mike Tirico. Mike? From the Big 8 to the Big 10, there were some shocking developments today, including this. Minnesota's Tim Shea to Tutu Atwell, the freshman. And Minnesota takes Paul Bunyan's axe back across the border as they win in Madison by three. And they get to keep the slab of bacon as well. Isn't that right? <laughs> they finally found that thing. 14 to 7, our score. Colorado leading over K State. 9.33 left until halftime. You have to be impressed with Chad May. And he's putting up some good numbers, but he's calling a good game at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Now 
J.J. Smith, can he turn the corner? Well, he does, but he gets hit hard and knocked out of bounds. Dalton Simmons, the first man to get out there on him, and also John Knutson. And uh, Mike Adamley, let's check with you again. Well, Ron and Mike, one of the biggest differences between these two programs, recruiting. As a perennial power, Colorado usually can get the pick of the litter, but Bill Snyder and his staff have to dig a little deeper. The Wildcats were the only Division I team to offer these player scholarships, and they all make contributions. Scott Collins kicks off. Mike Eckler, a special team ace, Gramatica, Hokett, running Schweiger and Wire, and all starters. The blueprint for turning a program around. Find that hidden gem. Bill Snyder and his staff have done just that. Mark Mangino is the recruiting coordinator for Kansas State. He kind of organizes the efforts for Bill Snyder's group. J.J. Smith was shaken up on that last play, trying to run off what looks like a, a Charlie horse. You know, this is a very well-taken point because uh, now Wygren is, is a good example. He was just under-recruited, the uh, defensive end, and turns out to be one of the best kids out of the state. He's from Wichita and is now starting to play very well for him. And Leon Edwards will come back in the ballgame. Senior out of Wichita. 5'6", 165. May's ball tipped, tipped again, and May just knocked it down. That was extremely smart because he was going to lose 10 yards on the play. Well, a lot of quarterbacks would have tried to catch that football, but Chad May just knocked it away. Been around the block a little bit. Started off in Fullerton, California, at Fullerton College. Found his way to Kansas State, and I'm pretty sure he'll be playing in the NFL. 10 for 12, 130 yards. Well, it was Greg Jones and Matt Russell who were doing the ball, batting the ball back and forth. Good job as far as the tip drill. I don't think they'll be offered volleyball scholarship, however. <laughs> Third down, they got to take it to the CU 45. Swagger, and I think we had a little miscommunication there. Swagger was turning out, and he wanted him to turn in. We need to make those plays if you're Kansas State because you do not want to give that football back to the Colorado Buffalo offense. Eric Hardy to punt, 9.05, left until the halftime. Chris Hudson again. Drops off as the single return person. You see Bill Snyder just trying to settle Chad May down. <laughs> Hudson makes the catch and gets by the first man. Then he gets a very good block and is going to be stopped at the 20 after a 37-yard punt. And five yards on a return by Marlowe. So we'll take a break. 14-7, to seven, buffs on top. Lots of reasons to buy life insurance. Here are two great ones. I'm State Farm Agent Mike Foy. As a golf family has grown, so have their life insurance needs. That's why we get together for family insurance checkups. I make sure to explain all the options, and they decide on the plan that's right for them. Ask your State Farm Agent for a family insurance checkup. It's a great way to learn about life. Believe it or not, we were the first airline to offer the passengers something to drink. These days, the menus are prepared by well-known chefs. Simple food, but it's done well, and it's all a carte. Choose whatever you want. It comes from some of the best restaurants and bakeries where we fly. And what is your choice, sir? It's a nice change from airline food. Some people just know how to fly. Next Saturday at 7, Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs battle the Florida Gators, only on ESPN. Sports riders. Everyone had a pick football's national champion? It's a highly scientific process. <laughs> it's time to settle it on the field. Introducing college football's national championship by Sega Sports. 32 top college teams going head-to-head. -head. No sports riders, just great football action. College football's national championship, only on Sega Genesis. 
14 to 7 our score and it's now time for our Sega Sports student athletes of the game for K-State senior linebacker Laird Beach he is majoring in criminal justice and has a 3-4 grade point average and for Colorado senior tackle Derek West he's majoring in business and has a 3.0 GPA Sega congratulates these fine student athletes about two and a half yards Oaks defensively Ron you, you, as you look at this defense what they're trying to do they're rolling corners up on the wide receivers playing eight in the box and really the player who has the most pressure on him is still believe is Steve Hanks he has to help in the run but he can't get up there too fast because they'll bomb him with a post behind him Hanks has been played at cornerback strong safety and now at three tonight Screen pass and they get it right over the middle to Westbrook, his second catch, but this one will only go for a couple as Colston stepped up uh, in traffic and made the stop. Mike, the thing you have to say about Westbrook, he is very unselfish, as we mentioned in the starting lineup tonight. If he played for another, another team and had a different kind of offense, they would make him a bigger part of the offense than this team does. He'd have 80, 90 catches for the season. Well, you remember, he had 70-some a couple years ago, and he was a return man. But Bill McCartney has sold them on being unselfish and being team players. They've got so many individual weapons, but they molded into a team style. Stewart steps up, drills it, and has it complete for the first down. That's going to be Fourier at the 32-yard line. When Elliot Uslak came in and joined Bill McCartney in the, on the coaching staff, they immediately put in a two-tight end offense. And what you need in that is a quarterback who can run and throw because you got the option involved. You need a great running back because the tailback's going to carry 30, 35 times a game. You don't have a fullback. You need excellent wideouts with speed because you can't be played one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You need two tight ends. That's the toughest position to find because most of your tight ends are basketball players, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, that don't continue in football. And then you need linemen that can pull. And this is Salon. And for the first time tonight, they're going to stop him for almost no gain in the play. Mike Adamley, what do you have for us? Well, Mike Godfrey and Ron Franklin speaking of that Mobile offensive line. Elliot Uzelak calls this Buffalo bunch the best group he's ever had. And that's high praise indeed, considering he coached at Michigan and the likes of Jumbo Elliott, Bubba Paris, Stephon Humphreys, a two-time All-American, Kurt Becker, and others. They are good, I'll tell you that. They got size, but they've also melded a few of them down because they want quick linemen with their strength coacher, Doc Freese. Yeah, that's a good point, Michael. Salam, no place in the left, so let's take it to the right, and he turns the corner. Has the first down, and is going to take it out to the 45-yard line. Steve Hanks finally puts the brakes on him. And Ron, I want to put a period on the, uh, what we talked about, all these individual weapons, and really the credit you have to give to Bill McCartney because he has the leadership in this program and the players have so much confidence in him he's won here but you have to remember when he first was here he lost but first they three stayed years. and he stayed with him but his kids believe in his style and they understand what he's trying to do here and they sacrifice you're right westbrook could have 80 catches for most teams but he's just happy to be a part of a winner of Westbrook. He is saying he was being pushed a little bit. That's Chris Canty who was covering on him. Mike, one other thing I want to mention before this ball game is over, I'm going to show you to back up also what you're talking about and, and the fact that the first three years here, Bill did not win. Later on in the telecast, we'll show you how many different offenses he's gone to. Well, he, they have searched, but it has worked. It's been very, very tiny. You're right, and the offense they're running right now fits a couple different things. One, you can run the ball, so weather in the Big 8 can be bad, so you can run the football. Two, it matches what you're doing against Nebraska because everything you do in the Colorado program is to beat Nebraska. <laughs> Option again into the boundary, pitches it to Salam. Boy, pretty good collision there. Beach is outside, also Gaskins. And Marlowe got a headgear in there as well. And the other thing about this offense, because they run the ball so effectively, 
they can run against their defense in spring practice and practice in the fall and they can toughen their defense up it's like when you have a passing team that's all you can do you don't toughen your defense up enough in spring practice and times that you practice against each other in the fall 14 to 7 if you just joined us 605 remaining until halftime State crowding the line of scrimmage a little bit now, and here they come with the pressure. Can they get to it? Yep, they're going to. Stewart's going to be sacked. Purcell Gaskins is the man who will knock him down for the second time tonight. He has been sacked. They brought Mario Smith out of the secondary, number four, with a blitz, and then they brought Purcell Gaskins, number nine. Colorado's in pretty good shape, but then it breaks down. It just busts down, and Purcell Gaskins makes the play. And I'll tell you, credit Bobby Stoops with a pretty good plan here in the first half because it looked like it was going to become a track meet. But he settled Colorado down. He settled his defense down. Andy Mitchell in the ball game to punt for the second time. Pressure up the middle gets it away. Mitch running, runs away from it, and now here comes a flag. I mean, that ball had gone completely out of bounds, and they're going to call it a running into or roughing one of the two. I would think that's only going to be a five-yard penalty, right? Because just running into him or blocked into him. Well, you talk about late now. This is late. Andy Mitchell, number 28. A couple of K-State guys collided. Leroy Rohr is a tailback for 25. Anderson is the man that got knocked into him actually uh, and but you're right he got pushed he got knocked off stride by his own man and I think that's one of the things that Bill Snyder is trying to argue right here running into the kicker by the defense five-yard penalty still fourth down still fourth down so you were right Mike it's not not a personal foul <laughs> Still have to worry about the fake now because it's fourth and three, even though I think Bill McCartney and Andy Mitchell will still try to punt this K-State offense in the hole and make Chad May go the distance against the defense. You're right, Mike. This would be, you got a fake punt. You only got fourth down and, a, and about two yards for the, uh, for the first. Just always have to be alert on defense. Might be a good spot for it. But Mitchell is going to kick it away. Mitch running on the run makes the fair catch at the 15-yard line. And now here comes a late flag in. 36-yard punt as Chad May on the sideline says, well, we've gone through this drill once. We're going to do it more than that. running number 89 with a catch Ted Johnson just kind of tapping him and uh, the flag flies so let's take a break 14 to 7 Colorado If you're looking for great Christmas gift ideas, Pots Etc. has lots of them. Wine racks, pot racks, stock pots, pot holders, shakers, blenders, toasters, bread makers, coffee makers, grinders, beans, aprons, linens, and napkin rings, cookbooks, cookie stamps and jars, waffle irons, wood goods, copperware, glassware, cutlery, pans and molds, and a yard of beer. Pottery, pasta, and vegetables of silk, waste baskets, picnic baskets, and lots of gadgets. Pots Etc. featuring Krupps, KitchenAid, Calflon, and Chantel. Southwest Plaza next to Foley's. Phone 972-9740. Long Ford's experience the difference rule number two. 
value pricing. Hillong's exclusive value pricing means our customers don't have to dicker to get a great deal. It just doesn't get any easier. And right now, during final model closeout, factory to dealer incentives mean our value prices have never been lower. Plus, we've got 2.9% financing on Taurus, America's best-selling car. We've got a value program that nobody can touch. Our customers do experience the difference at Phil Long Ford. ESPN. 14 to 7, our score. Colorado leads. You see, just over five minutes left until intermission. This ball game started off like a house of fire, and it's kind of slowed down a little bit, kind of grinding to a halt. Five yards stepped off against K State, so Chad May and company will scrimmage from their own 20. J.J. Smith, obviously okay, back in the game, and let's check once again with uh, Mike Tirico. Hello, Ron. Colorado thinking about the Orange Bowl down the line, so is Nebraska, the team that calls the Orange Bowl home. On the road, Miami had no problem. Cox to have the long ball going, two touchdown catches for Chris T. Jones. As Miami wins, they next play Virginia Tech, the Hokies at home, to prove their record to 7-1, and one, beating the Panthers. Both West Virginia and Pitt had that great game the week before. They may have both have suffered a letdown. Yeah, they could have. I said the penalty a moment ago was uh, against K-State. It was, of course, against Colorado, so that's the reason it went from the 15 out to the 20. Trying to get a Kansas State football in play. And probably had a Colorado ball because both quarterbacks went their own football. There's the K-State ball and get it out there. Mike, for people sitting at home that don't understand that, explain a little further. Well, you bring your own footballs. Kansas State would probably brought 36 footballs here, and the referees checked them all before the game, make sure they had the right weight in them, because a lot of passing teams like to take a little weight on the footballs to make it easier to throw. But easier to throw. Colorado uses their own ball, and uh, K-State uses their own football. 36 of them. That's expecting a lot of fouls. <laughs> Second and nine, you see the blitz on May standing tough in the pocket, incomplete. Ball got tipped, and then anybody can be taken on after that. Ron Brown is the man that he was looking for, though. To have good pass protection, you know, starts up front. Rod Humanick, former pro coach at New England and the Kansas City Chiefs, is going to make sure he blocks Kerry Hicks, the nose guard. Now, you're going to see some help here. Center's blocking, does a pretty good job. Then he gets some help from Chris Oltzman, number 63. So now it's third down. As it complete, Mitch running, breaks a tackle and comes out close to the 40-yard line. Steve Rosga finally put a stopper on him, but that's good for 19 yards. So rather than having to give the football Back to Colorado. First down. Just an option route. He's going to run inside and twirl outside here. He knows he's got man coverage. Mitch running. Now watch him work inside. Now twirls outside. Gets the separation he needs. Picks up the first down. Pretty good route there. That was a route that was designed to Mitch running from the time the ball was snapped. Junior from Decorah, Iowa. See Hudson lining up to throw the blitz. He got a man uncovered. That's who they hit. Swagger. And he's going to take it across midfield. And what appears now here comes a late flag in. Matt Russell will make the tackle. So the illegal block against K-State. Now let's see if he had the first down before that flag uh, was thrown, Mike. One thing you don't want to do when you blitz a quarterback is tip it off. And Chris Hudson, number 47, gave it away too soon. Oh. 
Illegal block in the back on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. Jim Ron, Chris Hudson's going to line up here on the right side. Now all of a sudden he shows blitz and there's no one on Tyson Swiger on the outside. Chad May just raises up, as you said, uncovered receiver. There's the easy throw to number seven, Tyson Swiger. And again, Chris Hudson can't tip it off that early. And Chad May will pick him. It's always been a rule. It always will be, isn't it? When you got an uncovered, you go to it. Swiger now four catches, 49 yards. As we mentioned in the starting lineups tonight, he's not necessarily the big play guy, but uh, good control receiver with a lot of height. Ron Brown couldn't hold on to it at the 46. Tried to tip it to himself. Greg Jones was out there trying to work against him, and it'll stop the clock with 3.23 until halftime. 14-7 Colorado. K-State last week against Nebraska couldn't get a running game going. Bill Snyder said we need to run the ball a little bit more in this game. 16 rushes, 17 passes. Good mix, even though they're not getting a lot of yards on the run. Keeping Colorado honest on defense. May zips it out and it's running again. Hit from behind. Oh my goodness, Darius Holland. Only thing is, Darius hit him so hard he knocked him forward for two and a half yards. Let's see where they're gonna say he was down. Down to the 48 and a half, so not quite enough for the first down. Same route. They just ran a couple plays before to Mitch running. Number 89. You're gonna see him go inside and then twirl outside. There's the play inside, twirls outside, separation for Chris Hudson. Close to the first down. He kind of disappeared, didn't he, Mike? First down, K-State. Well, this is what's coming up next Saturday, 12.30 Eastern Time, Wisconsin at Michigan. Then coming up at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Mike, this is where we're going to be, uh, down at Florida Field, in Georgia. We'll take on Florida. The Gators idle today. Georgia right now playing Kentucky, and they're wrapped up at a 13-13 time. And the Wisconsin-Michigan game actually is at noon, we're being told, rather than 12.30 Eastern time. K-State is taking a timeout here around with 2.33 left to go on the clock. They still have one timeout left. Mike Tirico, let's go back to you, please. With this reminder, Ron, coming up in a few minutes, the GMAC Halftime Report. We'll have the scores, the highlights of that other great game in the state of Colorado today, the battle for first in the WAC. We'll also track the top performances of the day. One of them happened by a Butler running back, a man by the name of Arnold Mickens. For the seventh straight game, he had over 200 yards on 47 carries as Butler beat San Diego U. Let's go back to Ron in Boulder. That's, that's incredible, Mike, when you think about the odds against either weather conditions, not only the opposition, but to have that many games in a row, 200 yards plus. Is that the Butler Bulldogs? Yeah. Butler Bulldogs. Same group. Mm -hmm. Tony Hinkle used to be the football and basketball coach at Butler. Great coach. Can you believe that coach basketball and football? He played very solid teams. I've known some... Some guys I thought were capable of, they didn't, were not allowed to do both, but probably would have been pretty good at both. Tony Hinkle is very good. First down, Mike, the ball just outside the 43. And K-State has moved the teams again. He's going to go up on top. It is snuffed away. He had it for a moment. Simmons with the cover, and Kevin Lockett probably should have caught the football, even though there was a lot of traffic. A dash play by Chad May just to get him away from the pocket. Dalton Simmons, number seven, in pretty good position, but Lockett was able to go up and almost, Kevin Lockett, number 83, almost made that catch. Well, there's Jim May. You recognize him from our opening tonight when Mike Adamley was riding in the truck with the May family. But he's on the 
sideline watching his son in a very important series here. Mike Adamley's always looking for a free ride. Got one today. <laughs> he may still be in that thing. I don't know. Somebody said something about fried chicken. Going to lock this one. A little stop and go. And he's got it. Swagger makes the reception as a marker comes down. Has to be interference on Dalton Simmons, number seven, because he was using his hands. Tyson Swagger really set up Dalton Simmons on this play. Nifty little receiver, 5'10", 175, Tyson Swiger. Left of the screen, you're going to see number seven use his hands. He just lost. At that point in time, he's lost in coverage. Dalton Simmons gets the penalty, but I believe K-State will take the completion. It's Roska who's coming underneath to make sure that the tackle was made. So here's the situation. Colorado, for the most part, with the exception of two drives, has dominated. Penalty is declined. First down. They have dominated with the exception of two drives, but right now, K-State with 2.20 showing on the clock in a position to tie this football game. Fifth catch for Swagger now. 80 yards for him. Here they come with the blitz again. Going to be wrapped up back at the 23-yard line. Greg Jones. Ted Johnson also coming through on the hit. So you got to split that sack. But Greg Jones very excited about a big situation for the Colorado defense. See the pressure coming by Matt Russell, number 16, Greg Jones, number 59, and Ted Johnson, number 46. Really, Ted Johnson, the first to arrive, then Greg Jones finishes off. Chad May, Ted Johnson, last year was the leader of the defense, but wasn't very vocal, said this year, I celebrate every time I make a tackle. Blitz again. May delivers it and has it incomplete. That ball hit Lockett on the shoulder pad, and he dropped it at the four-yard line. Well-thrown ball on the run, really against the grain. As you see, Chad May roll to the right now. He's going to get pressure again. Throws across his body with the ball's on the money. Kevin Lockett just couldn't hold on. And the proud father is not happy with that. Third down. They need to take it to the three-yard line to pick up the first. Over the middle, ball is tipped in, incomplete. The first man who got it was Matt Russell, and then in a very smart play as Ron Brown was going to pick it off, and Chris Hudson just grabbed him by the arm. That's not pass interference because the ball is tipped. Matt play. You're right. Matt Russell with really a nice play as a linebacker. He dropped back in zone coverage. Read the eyes of the quarterback. Ron Brown, number three, is coming across. But Matt Russell in perfect position to deflect that football. Grammatica to attempt the field goal from 41 yards away. Good pass. He missed it left. Plenty of distance on the kick, but he misses it just to the left. Mike, there's an opportunity that uh, Chad May has got to be thinking. We have a we have a first down, and the ball just out of what the 13-yard line, and to come away with nothing. But you might talk about what Colorado did defensively because they sent at least one, if not two people, on every snap. I'm sure they watched the film last week of what Charlie McBride and Kevin Steele did in Nebraska where they blitzed Chad May and Mike Hankowitz called out some blitzes on that particular series to try to get Chad May moving, not giving the time to find his receivers. Cordell Stewart with the option. 
action play, and it's Gaskin. Boy, Gaskins is everywhere. We've got him unofficially for seven tackles, eight tackles in the ball game. By the way, what happened with K-State in the drive? That's 12 plays, four minutes and two seconds, and they come away with no points. Mike Danklich with a good defensive plan and a good effort by that group of defensive linemen and defensive linebackers and backs. Cordell looked to his left, then to his right. Going to have to do something here, and he's going to be sacked. Back at the 20-yard line, and it's Tim Colston who got there to him. Well, coming up at halftime, the other Colorado team and what happened to them today. We'll take a look at the Nebraska highlights and those surprising ducks. Oregon surprised Washington today. All of that coming up at halftime here on ESPN. Well, the clock runs out, and that is the end of the first half. With our score, Colorado 14 and the Wildcats of Kansas State 7. Now let's go to Mike Tirico for the halftime report. Mike. Okay, Ron, Colorado's lost just two of its last 38 Big 8 games and looking to extend that to 39 right now in a close one with K-State. Coming up at halftime, the coach and Craig will join me. Both we'll scores and highlights from throughout the day. Also, we'll take a look at the big one in the uh, Big 10 today, Michigan's game at Illinois. Right now we're at halftime in Boulder for the Buffs lead by seven. That wasn't so bad. Well, I wouldn't congratulate yourself quite yet. I see. their Columbia Parker's radial sleeves oh! and zip out liner. <laughs> the Columbia Interchange System adapts to any outdoor situation. This halftime report is presented by GMAC. And let's check out what's going on right now. Southern Cal at home and in good shape against Cal. A blocked 42-yard field goal attempt of Ryan Longwell is picked up by Gerald Henry. The guy who blocks it takes it in. 61 yards on this score and Brad Otten in for the injured Rob Johnson doing a very good job. Cal without Dave Barr who's injured is really falling apart. And right now the Trojans lead by 49. Hey, they play Arizona at home on November 12th. They could be in the Rose Bowl picture. Syracuse is a good team offensively. Their defense is struggling. Their defense is 85th in the country in yards given up. Temple's putting up some numbers, but the Orange look to go to 6-1 and one and win a sixth straight. We welcome you to halftime. Coach and Craig, guys, this was maybe a look past Saturday. A lot of big games next week. Some interesting little potholes for big-ranked teams. We'll talk about that. But the big game of the day was without question in the whack in Fort Collins as they shoehorn a record crowd into Hughes Stadium. The question, Utah, Colorado State, two great defenses. Which offense would do the most damage? Well, the whack reverted to its old form. 765 yards of total offense. 31-29, Utah's up. CSU going for two. Justin Scholl, the tight end, gets it on the Anthony Hill pass. We're tied at 31, but the Utes come right back down the field. Mike McCoy to Curtis Marsh. 38-31, Utah, Ron McBride. Did a wonderful job putting in different formations, different looks, and he was into it. Last chance for Colorado State. You see the situation. Anthony Hill to the end zone, and Harold Lust, the safety, picks him off. He was a quarterback last year. Picks off the quarterback and goes the other way. 100 yards, a major league exclamation point on a huge win 
for still unbeaten Utah. They play BYU at the end of the season. That could be the last roadblock for Utah as the Utes up to 7-0 with a great win. They blocked three kicks, scored two touchdowns on INT returns in getting the victory. In the Big 8, Nebraska. Before next week in Colorado, the Huskers looking for 21 straight in the regular season. Three second-half Brooke Berenger touchdown passes. Brendan Holbein with that one. That's 12 straight now in the Big 8 for Nebraska. Lawrence Phillips, 110 on the ground. Over 100, his lowest total of the year, but still the Huskers roll on. In the Big 10, Michigan found a way around the Illinois defense. And on special teams, Amani Toomer in the third quarter. After holding Illinois, look at the three great blocks up the sideline, springing Toomer for a big touchdown. As a matter of fact, the only touchdown Michigan scored. Illinois had an offensive touchdown. Remy Hamilton, though, four field goals. He's 18 of 22 on the year. He helps Michigan get to 5-2 and two overall. Earlier today on ESPN, Ohio State went out with a big, big bang. Joey Galloway, three of those five Bobby Hoying touchdown aerials. Also in the Big Ten, Northwestern shocking Indiana, 20-7. First back-to-back -back road wins for Northwestern since 71. And the cheese week is won by Minnesota. The Vikings won on Thursday. The Gophers win in Madison today. In the Pac-10, Washington and Oregon getting down late. Washington trying to score. Go ahead, touchdown. But Damon Hewitt is intercepted by Kenny Wheaton. Cuts through the middle of the field, and he is gone. A 95-yard score, and Oregon snaps a five-game losing streak to the Huskies. Washington had more total offense. Not sportsmanlike, but reason to brag for Oregon as they get the win over the top 10-ranked Huskies. Napoleon Kaufman did get over 100 yards on the ground. Oregon only 202 offensive yards. Their defense helps them get the win next week. Oregon plays Arizona. The last time UCLA lost six straight was 1943. Then today, as Antoine Carter did a great job on the ground. Let's go back to the Big Ten. And, Craig, the Buckeyes, the people kind of forgot them. Everyone was focusing Michigan, Penn State. Ohio State's right back in this race as well. I think, Mike, a lot of reasons that they forgot them was because earlier in the season, Joey Galloway was suspended for two games, the star receiver. Today, he showed back up. Galloway is unbelievable with the three touchdown receptions he had today to go along with 500 yards offense and the defense of Ohio State which shut down that Purdue running game. They held Elstott and Rodgers that combined for over 200 yards. They only had 120 today. Ohio State will have a huge impact before the Big Ten race is finished. Coach, I know a lot of the fans of Colorado who are watching are very interested in Nebraska. We focused on the offense because of the injury to Frazier and the quarterback situation. We've forgotten about their defense, which is playing well. That's a good statement, Mike. And I tell you, Charlie McBride, McBride, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, is one of the best. I coached against him when he was at Wisconsin. Watch for him to come up with Nebraska system of blitzes to try to slow down this Colorado. I tell you, after seeing his first half, Colorado might beat Nebraska, but it'll be awful close. That defense has allowed 16 oh. points in their last three games, so Much a good effort by the Black Shirts. As we come back, more scores and highlights. Alabama, what else is new? Another close game for the Tide. We'll have the highlights of that and more as we continue at halftime on CFA Primetime with the Buffs at home, leading Kansas State by seven. Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It just might give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Don't let a new car payment get you all wound up. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It can put a new spin on affordability. I want more power. I'd like better mileage. Split Fire doesn't look like any other spark plug. It doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. A 4.8% gain in mileage. With Split Fire, you'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You'll get more power and more mileage for your money back. You'll get more here. And you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. Uh, nothing like a little pre-game tailgating, huh, pigskin pal? Couple of fans, couple of egg McMuffins. Two egg McMuffins for two bucks, huh? Mr. Farm Fresh Egg Boy. Mr. Two Buck Conversion. Go for two, guys. Go for two with McDonald's Two Buck Conversion. Convert two dollars into two hot fresh egg McMuffins or two towering tempting Big Macs. But the clock's ticking on this deal, so hurry. What you want is what you get. Well, you said we get a couple of Big Macs later on. That's a good call, Mr. Two All Be Fatty Boy. At McDonald's today. We got enough time before kickoff? Oh, sure.
Halftime Report is presented by GMAC Financial Services, the expressway home. Each team scored on its first drive, then the Cordell Stewart score. That has the Buffs up seven at halftime. As we continue more scores today in the Southwest Conference, Corey Pullock, the quarterback for Texas A&M, threw a touchdown pass, then made the biggest play on defense. He pulled down a Rice player trying to return a fumble for a touchdown. And A&M hangs on. They've won 26 straight Southwest Conference games. Also in the Southwest Conference, Texas continues to roll, beating SMU. Really a bounce-back game for Texas after the loss to Rice. Both quarterbacks play, James Brown and Shane Morenz, and both were effective in the sec alabama and ole miss this game was delayed by a thunderstorm for about 20 minutes in the second quarter then that was the tying field goal but roughing the kicker was called on alundas bryce of ole miss it put bama first and goal and two plays later later jay barker runs over abdul jackson for the touchdown alabama's like your golf game it's not how but how many they just keep rolling up those wins they're not pretty but this one by 11 as the tide stays unbeaten the Virginia Cavaliers, a very good win over North Carolina. The top defense against the run, Virginia shut down the Johnsons and Carolina, and the Cavs are 7-0 at home against the Heels under coach George Welsh. Duke continuing to roll on, folks. They are still unbeaten. Demon Deacons, Curtis Bunch fumbles, and John Zuanch picks it up and takes it 62 yards, 27 in the first quarter for Fred Goldsmith's unbeaten 7-0 Duke team. They play Florida State. Who would have thought that the last week in October, Duke would be playing Florida State, and Duke would be the team with the better record? Lead today, Florida State improved to 6-1. Warwick Dunn had 133 yards on the ground as the Seminoles win. Well, I tell you what, Bobby Bowden said after the ball game, he's not satisfied with the quarterback position. Look for a possible change there at quarterback for Florida State. Craig, a little payback. Miami went to West Virginia, lost their opportunity for the Big East title last year. Revenge today. Look well, like the old Canes team, Mike. Costa throwing deep, receivers catching it, and Warren Sapp, the defensive lineman, is a man. In Blacksburg, also in the Big East, Virginia Tech has won 10 straight at home. They play Miami next week. Boston College real, really falls out of its chance to gain a little bit of second or third or even the Big East title as they are tied by Rutgers. David Green, a great game, but a late fumble. Didn't allow Rutgers to, or BC to get a game-winning field goal attempt. Let's go back to the Southwest Conference and the Rice Owls. With A&M ineligible for the Cotton Bowl, this is really wide open, and Rice still has a shot at that bowl. You look at Rice and you look at Baylor, both 2-1 in the Southwest Conference. Rice goes if they win out. They still have a great chance. Texas 2-1. This team, Rice, could go to the Cotton Bowl. Baylor is their challenge, and they play them at Rice. Can you imagine it? Rice and the Cotton Bowls laughing all the way. No, I can't imagine it. Guess who they might play? Virginia. It'd make a great debate. But let me tell you something about Virginia. They're, they could have 10 wins in a row after that Florida State loss because they got at Duke, they got Maryland, North Carolina State. They would be in the Cotton Bowl against my friend's Rice team. Maybe lucky for Virginia that they got the loss early to Florida State Absolutely. and able to run the table here the rest of the way, which is now possible. We'll continue with more at halftime of the game in the Big 8, where Rashawn Salam added to his nation's leading total. He now coming at you with his 17th touchdown of the year. The Bucks lead by seven. This year will be 14 soon. Do you know what that is in dog years? <laughs> we had a spelling test in school today. I miss Featherwood Mainstream. Do you know what my score was? When Mommy takes my temperature, she tells me to put the thermometer under oh my, my coat. But I don't. Do you know what this is? Yeah, yeah. In the future, everything will be faster. Faster! <laughs> Limit will be... Then we've got a new radio station. Do you know where to find it? 96.5, yeah. The Peak, Denver's Rock Alternative. Rock Alternative. Listen to The Peak. Yeah. In last year's Copper Bowl, Kansas State University demonstrated the quality of its athletic program, and that success carries over to the classroom. In the last 10 years, K-State has ranked number one among the nation's public universities in the number of Rhodes, Truman, Marshall, and Goldwater Scholars. We offer quality programs and research opportunities, along with a faculty committed to teaching. At Kansas State, students can achieve their unique goals. Goals of all kinds. So 
saluting an American tradition, 125 years of college football. The GMAC Halftime Report continues in the SEC. Two teams but who needs this win more? Georgia or Kentucky? Zaire is putting up good numbers. The Dogs lead in the Commonwealth by 11. East Carolina's coach is Steve Logan against his alma mater. Right now, they're tied in the third quarter. The Lobos have won 19 of the last 22 meetings with New Mexico and State. And right now, it's a seven-point lead for the Lobos. Oklahoma did beat Kansas in the Big 8. The Jayhawks led by 10 in the fourth. Scott Blanton helping Oklahoma come back with a couple of field goals. Congratulations to Iowa snapping a five-game losing streak. Michigan State is 2-5. and five. Mississippi State's Derek Tate, a school record, 466 yards passing. Mississippi State rolls over Tulane. Air Force beats Fresno State. Falcons score 21 unanswered in the third quarter. Stanford gets its first Pac-10 win, five straight now over the Beavers. Other scores include Louisville bouncing back after the loss to Navy. They have scored 21 unanswered in the second half to get that margin of victory. Congratulations to the per this orange haze. What is this? Bowling Green's Ryan Henry. A school record, a MAC record, six touchdowns passing. This one 47 yards to Ronnie Reed. The Falcons win 59-36. The 95 points is a new MAC record. Ohio falls to 0 and 7. And Akron may be on their way to 0-7, and, and that would be 1A's longest losing streak. They have now lost that game to Toledo by 23. You let Vince drive in New Bonneville? Just to the game. The guy is a wild man. He wanted to see how the Bonneville stacked up to his BMW. I got his attention when I told him I had traction control, dual airbags, and even more horsepower than his BMW, and thousands less. So you think he'll like it? Well, I suppose he does. Where is that guy? Don't let a new car payment be a financial burden. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. Some people think athletes have it made. But nobody's life is easy. Everybody runs through tough times sooner or later. Running away from life isn't the answer. Drugs and alcohol won't solve your problems. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. As we continue on the GMAC Halftime Report, the Steve McNair story today, he needed 264 yards to become the NCAA all-time, all-division, total offense yardage leader. His mom was on hand to watch on third and 21. McNair needed 15 yards to get the record. He gets 22, the first down, and the record, passing Ty Detmer's mark of 14,665 yards. He didn't stop there. 649 yards of total offense in a wonderfully exciting game. Alcorn State beat Southern by the score of 41 to 37 for those immense numbers as McNair had to rally his team back twice, passing Ty Detmer and the others on the list. All division, all time total offense leaders. Nobody's won more games than Eddie Robinson as a coach. This number 395, Grambling has four regular season games left. He may win number 400 if they go unbeaten in the Heritage Bowl on ESPN late in the year in December. Number one in Division I AA, Marshall on the road. You just don't go into Boone and have an easy time. Right now, they are trailing Appy State by 10. We'll watch that during the second half. And on the postgame, residents in scoreboard, which is after the second half of the Bucks and K-State next. I'm Mike. And I'm Mike. If you're considering a new BMW, we invite you to join our team at Gebhardt Imports. Mike? Our pledge to you is a relaxed, informative atmosphere, making your BMW purchase a special occasion. Mike? Part of our team is our service department, whose goal is complete satisfaction for your ownership experience. So this is Mike. And Mike. Join our team at Gebhardt's. Discover the difference our experience makes. Relax. 
body benefits when you experience the physical and mental benefits of L.A. Spas. Over 50 models all designed to give you complete stress relief and mental relaxation. Feel the difference an L.A. Spa makes, like thousands of fingers massaging your knees to your neck. Or imagine six hands massaging your back, blasting away pain and tightness. All for around $10 a month and built expressly for you by L.A. Spas. So relax. It's my pillow. Shelly Fabre and Bill Fagerbaki of Coach discuss sports and education. We're all concerned about improving American schools. Well, what advice do you have, Bill? Sports. Sports? No, we're talking about education. Shelly, did you know that 96% of all high school dropouts were not involved in athletics or other extracurricular activities? Sports is a great motivator. That's a compelling reason to support sports for boys and girls in high school. Support America's youth through high school sports. Halftime, 14-7, to 7, the Buffaloes of Colorado on top in this one. And uh, Mike Gottfried, we talk so much about Salam right off the top of the telecast. Has he been as effective as you thought he would have been in the first half? No, and you have to credit Kansas State. They're piling up with eight people, and they're trying to stop the run. Here we're going to see him on the option play. Cordell Stewart kicks it out. A long touchdown run of 53 yards. Really, the only time they were able to spring him loose for a large game in the first half. So credit Kansas State and their coaches what they've accomplished. Now, you look at the one statistic that is a little bit misleading is the 137 right here. You subtract the 53-yard play, they really have 84 yards rushing, and I think that's been the difference in the first half, that K-State has been able to stop their running game, and it, which means their corners are holding up against Westbrook on the outside. On the other side, Chad Mays had success in the first half they've only had about 25 yards rushing but they're not just enough to keep them honest on defense so it's going to be the buffaloes who will be getting the football back to open the second half of play collins will kick this one off and get us going K-State probably the biggest thing that if they could change in that first half beyond the long touchdown run. That was the no points on that final series of the first half. But they used four minutes but came away with nothing of a 12-play drive. And kid's going to go down on one knee and elect not to run this one out. Rashawn Salam's rushing chart in the first half inside he's had some success to the right side of course he had the long touchdown run because Kansas State is forcing them to run the option to the outside now I would think Bill McCartney will come out in the second half with Elliot Uslak and say let's run Rashawn Salam up inside outside let's take advantage of Steve Hanks try to throw the post behind him and see what we can get some big plays Well, you figure that's what they're going to do. They're going to come out and try to wear out Kansas State running the football. And Michael Westbrook, number 81, really gets a great block on Steve Hanks, number 28. You see the handoff to Rashawn Salam. Good blocking. You're right, Derek West with the good pull block. There's the block by number 81, Michael Westbrook. Rashawn Salam off and running. But now it's time to play smash, a little bit of smash football here with Colorado's offense, a big offensive line. Mike, what's scary is you know what they're going to do, even know who they're going to give it to. And still they come up with the 18-yard game. Option play as a marker comes down, and uh, Cordell Stewart tackled by Kelly Green. Holding against the Buffaloes. Michael Westbrook in the first half round has two pass receptions. Now, by playing eight people in the box, that means Chris Canty, number 17, and Joe Gordon, number one, are really doing a good job on the outside, holding up against the receivers, especially Michael Westbrook. There you see Chris Canty. There's Joe Gordon, and that was the big question in the first before the ball game started could they hold up on the outside so far the answer is yes but there's a lot of time on the clock a 
And this time he's going to come up against Canty. Gordon had been the man that uh, had been shadowing him for the most part of the first day. Stewart zips it complete. Caruth about three yards shy of the first down at the 45-yard line. And Joe Gordon with the stop on him. And, and we just talked about it. You run the ball against eight, and then you throw it outside. You've got one-on-one. -on -one. Ray Caruth, number 21, was able to drive down the field and run a comeback route on Joe Gordon. Not bad coverage by Joe Gordon. And what you have to tell Joe Gordon is, hey, this is football. You're going to give up some receptions. I mean, you're not going to blank a guy all night because he's got the whole field to work on. So you're going to give up some pass uh, completions, but you're doing a good job. When you're out there on an island. You can't be too close or then all of a sudden it's six. Salam, Billy Stagger step. He's going to have the first down as he goes across midfield, and Wyram is there to make the stop. Brian Stoltenberg, number 64, the center. He's going to get a good block on this play. Just turns back and goes and blocks Purcell Gaskins, number nine. Good movement by the big center, 6'2", 265, Brian Stoltenberg. He's been a starter since he was a freshman. In fact, you remember the game we did up here? Coy Detmer was a true freshman, and I think it was the first time that year that a true freshman at center to a true freshman quarterback had played in an NCAA game that season. He came in here at 290, now he's 267. That's Keith Miller carrying the ball. He doesn't carry it very often, but they're trying to cross him up. One more story in Stoltenberg. He's from Sugarland, Texas, and of course, Southeast Texas has been deluged with anywhere from 20, 25, and 30 inches of rain. His folks live in Sugarland, which is where he's from, and he said that they were glad to get out of Southeast Texas, get up here where there were fewer clouds and, and no rain coming down. Good look at uh, Brian. Sociology major. the middle Stewart running for his life and just throws it away now here comes the flag Marlowe is the man with the pressure and the official stood and looked to see if there was someone within reason in the vicinity disregard the flag there's a receiver in the area Here's the pressure on Cordell Stewart, number 21, Chuck Marlowe, strong safety, playing on the line of scrimmage. Now, here's the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside that you have, but if there's no time to throw it, the coverage is pretty good by Chris Canty. The best pass defense is a rush that gets to the quarterback. You might, <laughs> they may have gotten a little bit of a break there, but he threw it away right in front of his head coach. But if you're going to do it, that's a good spot to do it, isn't it? Here the thumbs the pressure, and Stewart's not going to get over. Yes, he is. And then they trip him up at the 46-yard line. Tim Colston is the first man to get a hand on him after Oaks forced him out of the pocket. Well, they're just controlling the line of scrimmage. They're bringing people from all over the place. Mike Eckler, number 29, is going to come. There's Colston. Tim Colston, number 92, really gets held on the play. 94, Dirk Oaks. Tim Colston working again, number 92. Good defensive pressure by Kansas State. So Andy Mitchell to pump the ball away and fourth down from the 46. Pressure is on and they blocked it. Picked up by Joe Gordon. It was Marlowe who got the block of the punt. Well, Chuck Marlowe is heading for the player of the game here on defense because he has just been in on everything in the running game. You're going to see number 21 right here. Chucky Marlowe just come through inside. Gets a little bit of a brush block. There's the block kick, and K-State's in business on offense. But that's Gordon, number one, who will pick it up. All of a sudden, the crowd who had kind of sat on their hands after halftime standing up and trying to make some noise. Screen pass.
J.J. Smith tries to cut it back to the middle. He's going to pick up five more yards after he does, and that will be enough for the Wildcat first down. And let's go down to Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, one of the things that makes Chad May so attractive to NFL scouts is resiliency. He got hammered in the first half. He was sacked three times. Shannon Clavell, then Mike Phillips. Later, Shannon Clavell again. Ted Johnson got into it. But he keeps getting up. He's not gun-shy. And again, that is the one thing, in addition to a strong arm, that makes him so attractive to the NFL and why he'll be a, probably a first-round draft pick. 6'2", 220 pounds. Lops it over the middle, has it complete to his tight end. That's Loika. And now they see incomplete. He did not hold on. Brian Loika was open against the two deep coverage down the middle. Chad May, that was his read to go to the tight end. He just could not hold on to the football. Mike, let me show you numbers to show you the consistency of May. 206 yards in the first half here, 15 of 23. Last week against Nebraska, 173 yards. And the week before that, 271 against KU in the first half. That's 650 yards and a 67% completion percentage. Throws this one complete at the six, and now here comes a flag. A face mask is going to be added on to this. It will be first and goal, K-State, from in the vicinity of the three-yard line. Well, Mike Adamley was talking about pro football, and when you have a quarterback that can throw the out and the deep comeback, that's what you want, the strong arm that can work the field, because in pro football, the hashes are farther inside, so you're really always in the middle of the field in the pro game. Here's Mitch running, running to come back, and the ball's right on the money when he breaks out of his route. The ball couldn't have been thrown any better. There's the face mask on Elton Davis, number 22. Fourteen to seven, Colorado leads, but the Wildcats with a first and goal just outside the three. And they go with the running play. J.J. Smith at the one. Does he get in? They're going to say about the six-inch line. Ted Johnson wrapped him up, but he was awfully, awfully close. Good lead block by the fullback, Diedrich Kelly. Now you'd think Chad Mays close enough at 6'2", 220 to sneak this one in. J.J. Smith says, give me the football. <laughs> I'll use my 6'205 frame. I'll get it in there for you. Right now, either teammate doesn't care. They just want to get it. That's six inches. And they go with the fullback. And Kelly, did he get it there? Nope. No signal has been given. It's going to be third down. Well, we talked about Chad Mann, a quarterback sneaker, J.J. Smith. They gave it to the fullback. And there's not really a lead blocker for Diedrich Kelly on that play. And you take the ball off the line of scrimmage. Probably want to give it to J.J. Smith or quarterback sneak. So here they come. K-State trailing by seven. It is a third and goal. Inches away. Again, they go to the fullback. And he does not get there this time. Rod Schiller. and Kerry Hicks have been the two keys in this drive. And it's pad under pad, and that's the reason they were able to get their pads underneath the offensive line. I think it's a good, it's a good move by Bill Snyder because if you're going to upset Colorado, you better play for the win. You better not worry about three points here. You better try to get six. Crowd will let you know if they go silent, K-State scores. If you can't hear yourself think, they hold it.
what's on everybody's mind right now? Football, big guys, big thrills, big fun. But don't just think tailgate parties, think tailgate sweepstakes. Coach Kelly's tailgate sweepstakes at your participating Kelly dealer. Win a $500 gift certificate from Land's End. Hundreds will be awarded throughout the country. Now that's a grand prize you can love. Of course, so are the good deals you'll find on great Kelly tires. So get your tailgate to your Kelly dealer today and enter Coach Kelly's tailgate sweepstakes. Don't pass this one up. In 1930, Northwest installed air-to-ground radio communications. <laughs> and uh, with a little altitude, we could darn near hear Chicago from Minneapolis. Is everybody on the line, Bill? Yes, John, we're all here. I'll fix it to you. These days, people can make a phone call without getting out of their seat. Hi, Mom. Some people call home just to say hi from 35,000 feet. Guess where I am. <laughs> Some people just know how to fly. I found a way to make my money really perform. I bought this car. A probe GT. I refuse to go broke trying to look good. Did I mention this car's a blast? I'm no financial genius. I just feel like one. For a limited time, you can get up to $1,000 cash back in the front-wheel drive Ford Probe. See what I mean? ESPN's presentation of Saturday Night CFA is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Some of the beautiful scenery here in Boulder, Colorado at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Oh, what a goal line stand by these two guys right here. When you talk about the perpetrators, <laughs> Kerry Hicks, also Darius Holland, and throw in Ted Johnson, they were outstanding on that goal line stand. And what you want your defensive lineman to do is get pad under the pads of the offensive lineman so that you can't get any movement out of your offensive line. You want to redirect a new offensive line of scrimmage. You want to make a new one. Mike Rover's going to find out now is how much fire that took out of K-State, if any at all. Kalon going to be stopped with the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a half yard. Colston. This was third down, Ron. Just about an inch to go for the touchdown. And you see the defensive lineman. And really a nice job. Rod Schiller, number 30, trying to go over top. And this is fourth down. They tried to take it a little wider, figuring that Colorado was going to go inside. But uh, the defensive lineman really went outside. Darius Howell, number 93. Also, Matt Russell. You could see number 16 out there with an outstanding job making the hit. And on fourth down, K-State does not get it in. Option play as Stewart will hold on to the football. He'll only have a couple. And now it's going to be third down. And for Colorado to keep this drive going, they'll have to take it out to the 19. Ron, on fourth down, let's go back to that fourth down play because there's something interesting there. You figure everybody's going to go inside, but these defensive linemen loop outside because they feel like the ball is going to go outside. Watch the movement of the defense. See them go outside? They had a figure that the play was going to go outside, not inside, and they were right on the call. Mike Hankwich with a good call with the movement outside of his defensive lineman. How much do you think they were tipped by that uh, the man in motion turning his shoulder pads <laughs> as if he was setting up the block? Cordell Stewart up on top and incomplete. Joe Gordon step for step with Carruth on that play. The most amazing thing to me in this ball game is the fact that Michael Westbrook has not caught a deep pass. With this 6-4 frame working against those two corners, one's 5-9 and one's 5-10. But Joe Gordon, number one, you've got to give him and Chris Canty a lot of credit. And Bobby Stoops, the defensive coordinator. They're challenging Colorado to throw the ball deep. And they just shut down the running game. Andy Mitchell standing five yards deep in his end zone. And they got one blocked last time out. It was Marlowe. Who's in the left-hand side of your screen. This time they take care of it. And it's a bad punt off the side of his foot. Now he's going to take a Colorado bounce. And it's going to go dead at the 43-yard line. Only 33 yards in the kick. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back to Boulder after this. All of us. 
us are driven by something different. And yet millions of people have found that no matter what road life takes them down, they enjoy the ride more in a Ford car or truck. Enjoy the new ideas and craftsmanship. Appreciate the value. With Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car, F-Series, America's best-selling truck, and five of the country's ten best-sellers made by Ford, it seems as if a lot of people have driven a Ford lately. What do these women think about the new Sicilian-style pizza from Pizza Hut? Wow, they love it! New Sicilian-style pizza from Pizza Hut. Basil, oregano, garlic baked right in for a pizza crust like never before for only $8.99. Every day in 34 countries and over 300 cities, Delta Airlines takes off to the world of facts and figures, budgets, and bottom lines. And when the job is done, we bring you back to the world of mommies and daddies, boyfriends, girlfriends, and best friends. Delta Airlines. When sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell, no odor. Why sports cream? Because it works. Next Saturday at 7, Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs battle the Florida Gators, only on ESPN. 14 to 7, Colorado leads, but in case you're just turning on the television, there have been two missed opportunities by K-State, and particularly the last one, for the first and goal at the three-yard line where they came away with no points and then the drive right at the end of the first half. Right? And you and I both felt that J.J. Smith was very close to getting in the end zone. His body was in the end zone, but you couldn't tell whether the ball was in the end zone. Don't forget, coming up later in the game, we'll be selecting the Visa players of the game, and there are a whole lot of folks that have uh, put their name on the on the ballot in this one. Both sides of the football, offensively and defensively. Well, we thought we were heading for a scoring fest, and all of a sudden, it just came to a halt. K-State, beginning at the Colorado 43. There you go, boys. to the short side of the field. J.J. Smith going to be caught, and Matt Russell will bring him down. And there's another kid who has really had an outstanding game. Mike Tirico, what do you have for us? Ron, with Colorado State losing to Utah, the youth's last test may be BYU. Tonight, BYU is in the Sun Bowl against UTEP. A Sean Gray touchdown pass to J.J. Roulette, and the Miners lead by seven. Wow. BYU's got some work to do. If they win after the Utah win today, there won't be a drop of milk left in that state tomorrow. <laughs> Near side, what a throw and catch. Complete to Kevin Lockett at the 17-yard line. And that's about as well as you can cover. I mean, Hudson was all over him legally. And that's the throw I was talking about because you go to the next level in the NFL and they move those hashes further inside. Everything is a throw where you throw the ball outside. Kevin Lockett with a nice catch, number 83, but a lot of zip on the ball by Chad May. 19 of 28, 257. Pretty good evening. Needs to get him in the end zone. Throws it away. Flag comes down, and Bill Snyder is on the field. And what he's saying is Loika, the tight end, was standing almost next to his quarterback. That's what Bill Snyder is arguing. Well, they need to get Bill off the field there. Bill needs to get him back on the sideline. But he's making his point. The tight end was really blocking on that play, Ron. Right. But I think what he's saying is, yes, he was a... a Disregard the fly. Well, that's one Bill won. <laughs> well, again, Mike, yeah. if you're going to do it, do it in right. front of your head coach. That's then the exactly lobby is right. a little stronger. 
<laughs> and Bill you know, on the other side is not arguing the point. They used to say that about Mr. Brown, that, uh, that Paul Brown always ran his punt returns back in front of his bench because he didn't think anyone would dare throw a flag if it was close to his bench. Not bad theory. So the situation, it is a second down and ten. And that's big because it would have been lost of down. Yes. Ball is tipped and intercepted. Ted Johnson. Mike, I think this is Kerry Hicks who tipped the ball at the line of scrimmage. So many opportunities. You're right. Kerry Hicks, number 94, the middle guard. Nose guard, just rushing. Now he stops. Now he gets his hands up in the air. Tips it. Ted Johnson, number 46, with the interception. Chad May just trying to dump the ball over to J.J. Smith. There's the tip. It's a drill everyone works on on defense. The tip drill. Ted Johnson makes the reception. Another missed opportunity by to say, the Wildcats. Put an asterisk by that one. That's three times that K-State has been inside the 30-yard line and has come away with nothing. And a nice defensive move by Tim Colston. Boy, we talked about him off the top of the telecast about making the big plays, and we've got him for seven tackles in this one tonight. Clock running, five minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. It is the Buffaloes of Colorado 14 and the Wildcats of K-State 7. They've stopped the running game with eight people, but you have a six foot four receiver on the outside versus a 5'10 corner, Chris Canty, and that's the advantage to Colorado. And they did a good job of getting both feet in bounds. 27 yards in the pass play. Stewart steps up, gonna go on top. Once him again, incomplete check of 21. Carruth rather than 81. Got away with interference there, I believe. Joe Gordon, number one, was bumping Carruth all the way down the field. He has him beat on the inside. Now, the free safety, Steve Hanks, is gone. There's a little bit of a bump there. Pulled his right arm. Uh, got away with a call. Now, here has come a late flag from the far side. And it is going to be on the bench against Colorado. Talk about big play now. So they're getting pass interference. You get a call. That's for the line. Against the offense. 15 yards penalty. Second down. Unsportsmanlike on the bench. And probably what happened is Coach McCarthy <laughs> saw Bill Snyder on the field a while ago, and he decided he was going to come out and protest. And he got a tee. So it's going to be second down, and the line to make, they got to go all the way across midfield to the K-State 48-yard line. Good job as he gets sandwiched to just across the 35-yard line. Every time he touches it, though, you know that he's capable of just putting it in the end zone so quickly. And that's a good call on second and 25 because all you want to do is you want to pick up about 10, 12 yards to put yourself in the third, 10, third, and 11. And Michael Westbrook again with good yardage after the catch. Now the third and 15. Tim Colston makes the tackle and you see why he is a two and a half year starter as a junior he's out of tampa florida 
This defense, Kansas State, has really played emotional football tonight. Kelly Uzak, the offense coordinator, says the best coach defense they played this year. Here comes the blitz now, Mike. Got the single coverage ball is tipped and it is going to be intercepted by Veach. In fact, two of the teammates ran together and Veach came down with it as Mario Smith was also trying to make the pickoff. And you can't keep giving Kansas State field position. Eventually, they are going to take advantage of it. But Mario Smith, number four, a safety, was on the blitz. Cordell Stewart never was able to pick up number four. this K-State defense. They have really played lights out tonight against an excellent Colorado offense. Chad May again has the luxury of taking over the football across midfield. Yeah, Ron, you just, you got to take advantage of it. Your defense is giving you the football. You got to get it in the end zone. Got his man, Schweider, inside the 30-yard line, and he's tackled at the 26. You just continue. I mean, you can say a lot of different things about Chad May, but he throws certain passes as well as people throw them on Sundays. That was a little route that they caught him in too deep coverage, and he was able to get the ball to Tyson Swiger on the side. He take, took a hit after the throw. And they're going to have to take him out of the game. Matt Miller, who is a junior out of San Diego, California, who transferred from Texas A&M, will come in for... What Bill Snyder is hoping for one play. His father, Les Miller, is a, is a personnel director, now works in the World Football League. Think they may be blitzing him? <laughs> and it's a quarterback draw. Delay a game, Ron. That's what the call is going to be. Mike? Woulda, shoulda, coulda, but I'll tell you what, what a call because oh. this kid right here, everybody was coming toward the quarterback and had been picked up, and that was going to wind up being a huge plus. Well, usually when you bring a new quarterback in, you don't want him to throw the football. You want to give him a little bit of a chance to, to settle down. Delay of game against Kansas State. So Chad May comes back in, and Matt Miller will come to the sideline. Delay. On the offense. 20 to 31, 277, and an interception. Draw play. J.J. Smith breaks a tackle, breaks another. Headed for the end zone, J.J. Smith. Ron looked like a little trap play up inside. And J.J. Smith has so much quickness. Bill Snyder with a very good call on that play. You know, the draw was open. You mentioned the draw was open yep. before, and the play before, they came right back, worked the ball inside to J.J. Smith. Gramatica, who just his home as LaBelle, Florida, into a tippy extra point. This is by way of Argentina. And he ties it up with three minutes and 38 seconds left in the third quarter. Let's take a break. some less expensive used equipment at Play It Again Sports. Cars not running good? Then it's time to put L&L under the hood. L&L is a friendly, family-owned and operated business. From oil changes and emission testing to transmission and engine overhaul, L&L's all-data system and ASE certified technicians know your car, so the job's done right. And L&L offers a coast-to-coast -coast parts warranty with CarQuest Auto Parts. In our part of Jefferson County, there is a reputable full-service automotive repair shop. 
For bumper-to-bumper -bumper service, put l and &L under the hood. Phil Sims on the importance of the World Cup. I've always thought everybody should wear one. Need more than Division I college football scores? How about all of Division I, II, and III? Complete scores plus new stats and inside info? Get them whenever you want on ESPN Net. Call 1-800-ESPN-PRO to subscribe. Get connected with ESPN Net on Prodigy. Tied at 14 as you look at J.J. Smith, who had the 30-yard touchdown run just a moment ago. Two plays, 46 yards, 42 seconds elapsed. The beach interception. And Ron, they finally made him pay for the for the poor field position. The defense from Kansas State got the ball in the, inside the 50-yard line so many times for this ball club. They finally made a pay. Chad May talking with his receivers. And Scott Collins prepares to kick it off. The kid and Troutman. This one is returnable. This is kid from the four. touchdown play they're going to end up double on the nose guard but the block is going to be by Chris Oltzman number 63 on the linebacker stop it right here here you see the separation of the linebacker now he's just going to seal him off and JJ Smith's going to hit that play and the safety's going to miss the tackle and the angle on him and they're off and running so well, Mike Cordell Stewart now has got to start a new string. He had gone 93 passes without throwing an interception until that beach pickoff. Option play. Breaks one. Breaks the second. And Cordell Stewart's off. Milo is going to run him down. Michael Westbrook made this play again. Now you talk about great receivers. You're not just going to catch the football. You have to block. And Michael Westbrook was blocking on Joe Gordon, number one. Now let's just pick up Michael Westbrook. Now you know the option's coming behind him. He gets on Joe Gordon. Joe Gordon makes a mistake. Gets caught inside. But now watch him just stay with him, run with him. Just keep extending the play for Cordell Stewart. That's good for 44 yards. 3.23 left in this third quarter. Tied at 14. Counter play. Salam and a nice job. And again, Tim Colson, we have called 92 at least in double figures tonight, is there to make the tackle. And Ron, your point's well taken. He's only six foot one, but he has great leverage. Line of scrimmage stays low and moves down the line of scrimmage. You're going to see him here. Six foot one. He sees the block. He reads the block so quick. Is able to go outside and make the tackle on Rashan Salam. Wow, he has been extremely impressive tonight. Tim Colson, Jr. from Tampa. to bring it to the wide side of the field this time. And the pitch at the last moment, Salam with a block. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the 20. Now they show the 19-yard line. That's the one spot that K-State has not been able to stop Colorado. And the reason they can't stop it, one of the reasons is their defensive ends are playing inside of the tight end the tight ends are sealing them down and they're not a factor on the option and then once once the ball is taken outside the pitch is there true greatness of a of a team run is when somebody scores on you come right back and score back Stewart going to keep it and he'll go for three yards and Mike Tirico let's uh, check with you again Ron, we told you number one in Division I AA Marshall was losing. Todd Donnan back to pass, intercepted by Johnny Smith. And the Appalachian State DB will take it 68 yards, number one in some serious trouble in the fourth quarter, down by 10. Wow, only four minutes and 40 seconds left there, Mike. Ron, that's Jerry Moore, the former head coach of Texas Tech there at Appalachian, trying to pull that upset over Jim Donnan's Marshall crew. Also former assistant coach at Nebraska. Right. Draw play. Salam has a big opening at the five. He'll score. <laughs> the 
There is a flag down, but that's going to be face mask against K State. Steve Hayes just trying to grab onto what he could. Good book. Excuse me, Ron. I was going to say good block by Derek West, and what acceleration by Rashawn Salam. Mike, K-State was shifting in the secondary just as the ball was snapped. And you can't make a mistake against number 19, Salam, because he has so much acceleration once he gets in that hole. He just puts it in a double here. Sorry, Boscovician to attempt the extra point here. the counter play the right guard pulls and number 72 Derek West is going to get the block in the hole on number nine for Sel Gaskins and now the acceleration of Rashan Salam and there is the flag quickly let's go down to the sideline Mike Adam Lee is with a former Colorado Buffalo who was uh, very good at the football also at golf Mike who you got with you there well, Ron, old Colorado football players never die. They just become megastars on the PGA Tour. Hale Irwin, class of 67. You were an All-America defensive back, but you started your career as a quarterback. Why the switch? Oh, it was more fun on the top of those piles and underneath them, Mike. Uh, well, I switched. The coaches switched me over between my sophomore and junior year. Uh, I think my tendency was better to be a defensive back than a quarterback. Uh, my skills seem to be more natural there. I wasn't at all unhappy with that. You know, your brother Phil played linebacker here here in the late 60s. He was a pretty big guy. You're a pretty big guy. But how is it that you got a nephew who is 6'5", 290, Heath Irwin? Well, Heath is sort of the oddball of our family. He's uh, he's a big boy. and he's. I guess the thing that's good about Heath, he's a nice kid, and uh, he's having great success. His brother's down at the University of New Mexico playing as a freshman, so, you know, football runs in the family. Okay, and the uh, Irwin family tree continues here in Colorado. Your son, Steve, a freshman on the golf team. Well, he is, uh, he's a junior now, but a sophomore in eligibility, and, and he's been playing pretty well. He's, like all things, though, it comes and goes. Hey, Hale, thanks for joining us. Good to see you here in Boulder. Thanks, Mike. Smith down to return. No, check it. It's Michael Lawrence, 23, and he'll take it out to the 23. My question, I'd love to know if, if Heath is 6'5 and over 280 pounds. I wonder how far Heath or can hit a driver. Probably into the woods. Well, that's, that's what Mr. Pinnock said. He said the woods are full of, uh, of long hitters. 153 left in this third quarter. It is the Buffaloes back on top by 7, 21 to 14. Reverses his field and we're out of foot race. Simmons is going to catch him and push him out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Well, it seems like it's the first quarter again when both these teams were starting out with so much offense. And it's a good and it's a good uh, Dalton Simmons, number seven, really saves this play. Just a quick slam to Kevin Lockett, but now he's loose in the secondary. Dalton Simmons, number seven, is going to take a good angle of pursuit and knock him out of bounds. Apologize on the miscall. call. These youngsters like to tuck those jerseys up underneath their shoulder pads, and sometimes it's hard to pick up them up here for old eyes. 59 yards in the pass play. Zings it out. Got this one to Mitch running. And running is going to take it for a gain inside the 15 to the 13. And Hicks is there to make the tackle. That's pitch and catch for Kansas State all night. Little option route with Mitch running, working against Chris Hudson on the inside. Chad May has been impressive tonight. So the ball is resting just outside the 13-yard line. About to go under a minute to play, third quarter. Colorado just went on top, and K-State trying to put it right back in the end zone. Locks for the end zone and just well overthrown. Ron Brown, I guess, is the man that he wanted. Now we've got a flag that has been thrown at the one-yard line. Elton Davis was trying to cover on the play. going to be defensive holding against Colorado.
going to be on Elton Davis, I believe, Ron, number 22. He was trying to cover on him, yeah. Yeah, against that Ron not Brown, have... right here. It's mm -hmm. going to be the hold call. A little bit of jersey there. Yep, that's, they sure did. They caught him. It could not have been pass interference because it was not a catchable ball. I don't know if Chad May saw that or not, Holding but probably. On the defense, half the distance. Anyway, he did the smart thing rather than get it picked off. Remember the last time they were down here inside when the Colorado had that goal line stand? <laughs> yeah, that, that one, uh, they got him on the doorstep. Had a first and goal at the three. Now they have a first and goal at the six. They also had a first and goal at the 13 and didn't get in there. Chad May will carry the ball and down to the three-yard line. Ran right out of the tackle of Ted Johnson, number 46. He had to stop at the line of scrimmage, just did not wrap up. Darius Holland and Hicks combining to the stop. Ron, you and I both feel the same, and this guy's done a remarkable job at K-State. Really Bill has. Snyder. He really has. Uh, it just... <laughs> he said last night as they came out here for the walkers that this is one place we have really had trouble playing well there. In the house of horrors for him. J.J. Smith up the middle, touchdown K-State. I only had to call that one because his whole body was in the end zone. <laughs> and they still delayed the signal. Schiller with an excellent block on the play. Uh, you and I will not be invited to the official referees I'm across not. the country's banquet this year. <laughs> to attempt the extra point trying to tie it up again and he got it so Chad May drives his football team right back down the field and the play that got him there the 53 yarder 59 yarder to Kevin Lockett Rod Schiller number 30 J.J. Smith can just follow the block on Ted Johnson number 46 into the end zone for the touchdown so here are the standings in the Big 8 Conference. Nebraska with a 3-0 record. They were successful today. Colorado trying to make it 3-0 and head into that game next week is 8-0 uh, against 7-0. Then Oklahoma at the 2-1 K-State. Boy, if they pull this upset here tonight, they go to 2-1. Well, Nebraska's sitting comfortably in Lincoln, Nebraska, watching this game tonight. And they'll start their work. I'm sure they've already started on Colorado. And when you play a rivalry like that, sometimes you spend a little time in your open dates against them. And uh, so Colorado now has to, again, break this tie. Now we saw some of the big eight scores. Now the scores in the Big Ten Conference. Northwestern. Barney with a big win. Used to be the offensive coordinator right here for the Colorado Buffalo. Gary Barnett did a good job here. Then Les Steckel came in here, did a nice job. Now Ellie Uslach's in here. So Bill McCartney keeps replacing strong people with strong people. Kid, five yards deep. He won't return this one. Eleven seconds left in the third quarter. Kansas State thrown for 341 yards. Colorado rushing the football 239 yards around. Seven yards of pop for Colorado, what you were talking about earlier. That's, that's been their average if you look at the numbers on Cordell Stewart tonight. 8 of 15, 127 yards in the one touchdown. Also has been intercepted, which uh, snapped his streak at 93 straight passes without being picked off. Salam is gasping who is going to wrap him up. And that'll be the final play of this third quarter. So let's take a break. That's the end of the third. Our score, K-State 21 and Colorado 21. Hi, may I help you? Yeah, I need some shorts to play basketball. Indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. Uh, full court or half court? Half, I guess. Uh, pick up our plan. Shirts or skin? Excuse me? Uh, day or night, home or away, team or one-on-one. -on -one. 
active wear becoming too specialized for you? Try Discus Athletic, heavyweight sweats and tees. The active wear that's right for however you play. Discus Athletic, the way America plays. Horse or pig? Introducing Ford Contour. Gold, a world cost for the 21st century. Example, the advanced Quadralink rear suspension. It was designed to allow rear wheels to adjust in sync with the front, giving Contour precise control in cornering and braking. Then it was put through two million miles of rigorous testing just to make sure. The totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. What's the matter, son? I'm kind of worried about a package I sent out for Mr. Jones. A cup of coffee? Well, sending out that package is a big responsibility. Jones knows you'll come through. Hard work, faith, trusting each other. That's what it's all about. Besides, in over 20 years, FedEx has never let me down. What if I didn't use uh, FedEx? <laughs> well, then, you're dead. <laughs> Next time, use FedEx. Get the lights on your way out. Sports fans, you've seen the best. Now, Bob Albert's here to show you the rest. Lots of forcing around in the world of sports. There's 45 minutes of non-stop fun in Marv's great new video, the hilarious Albert Achievement Award. And best of all, your video's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. In this great new video, Marv catches all the amazing good work, agility, grace, and power that makes sports so much fun to watch. Hysterical! Call now, and you'll also get your choice of an authentic NFL Pro-Line hat. Free! Pick your favorite team. It's up to you. The Albert Achievement Awards video and the NFL hat of your choice make a great gift for yourself or your favorite sports fan. And it comes with 54 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.47 an issue. You save over 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Nobody's into sports like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. No part of this overflow crowd tonight in Boulder, Colorado, tied at 21. Ron, when you look back, maybe the missed opportunities by K-State in the third quarter may come back on them. So far, so good. They're tied. But here was a fourth down play where they tried to go outside. Colorado had line movement to the outside. J.J. Smith was not able to make it outside. And Chad May with a little pass tipped by Hicks inside the nose guard. Kerry Hicks intercepted by Ted Johnson. Two chances that they came away empty. Also, uh, K-State had the opportunity late in the first half and uh, did not come away with points. But right now, as you mentioned, they are tied in the football game at 21 as we go to the final 15. Counter tray action, and Salam will be close to the first down, but it's not going to happen. Mike Adamley, what do you have for us, sir? Well, Ron and Mike missed opportunities notwithstanding. This was the exact position the Kansas State coaching staff wanted to be in. They were well aware that they hadn't won here in Folsom Field since 1973. What they were telling us and telling me yesterday, Mike, all we want is a chance to go into the fourth quarter with a chance to win. That's exactly what they have right here with 14.30 to go. What Bill Snyder's doing on the sideline right now is just trying to regroup and try to get some plays listed that he wants to run the next time he gets the football. But his defense has to stop Colorado. Salam. And Mike, you notice that Merritt is back in the ballgame again. They're trying to use a lead blocker. I don't know if he got this first down or not. I don't think he has the first down. I think it's a fourth down situation. They're going to force the punt. Niall Wyron, number 44, was able to come underneath the block and make the tackle. Also, Fogel helping out on the stop, so the punting unit comes on. And Andy Mitchell has been extremely busy tonight compared to their other ball games. And they've already blocked one punt tonight. Chuck Morrow. Good coverage kick. Not real deep, but very, very high. Mitch running with a fair catch at the 41-yard line. That is a 30-yard punt. Mike Adamley. Well, Ron and Mike, there's one Colorado player who is watching this game in his hometown of Detroit. Freshman linebacker Tyrone Bussey was diagnosed with leukemia after he signed his letter of intent this past spring. He underwent chemotherapy. His family came to Boulder with him in a 30-foot RV to lend support. 
Tyrone fought hard to make it through two a days and fulfilled his goal of making the traveling squad for the mission game. But when his teammates flew home afterwards, Tyrone stayed behind to begin the biggest battle of his life. More in a moment. Okay, Michael, we'll get back to you to conclude that story, because it is a nice one. Let's go back to Mike. Well, this coming Monday, Tyrone will undergo a bone marrow transplant back into Detroit from his sister. It's an amazing story. And Tiger, your Colorado football family wanted you to know this one's for you. They wanted to show you how much they care. Tiger, I'm praying for you, and I want some of Mom's fried chicken in the spring when you come back. Colorado bus wish you well. Hope you get back soon. We love you, man. We love you, man. Hey, Nice message, and I'm sure very warmly received. Leon Edwards, the ball carrier. He takes it to the left for one yard. Matt Russell defensively. Until you're a member of a team, you don't really realize how much goes into it and the, the feelings of one member of a football team for another. And Bill McCartney has fostered that on his football team, a, a good feeling and a good relationship amongst his teams. And they, were, uh, they care about each other. And I feel the same way about Kansas State on the other side. Chad May with a third down. He needs the ball to the Colorado 49 to keep this drive going. Lops it. And caught by Brown. Did he keep it in bounds? Yes. Ron Brown with a diving catch kept the foot in. And at 5'7", believe me, he stretched it out as far as he could. That's 16 yards. He just left his feet, concentrated on bringing the football in. And Ron Brown just moved the chains and kept this upset possibility alive for K-State. What a catch. Steve Roska, number 15, covering. Draw play. Edwards going to be hit in the backfield. Guess who? Kerry Hicks. Boy. <laughs> Kerry Hicks red draw from the snap of the football. Number 94, the ball snapped. Draw, he's in the backfield really before Leon Edwards can make any kind of move. Salt Lake City. I'll tell you what, he's been as devastating for Colorado as uh, Tim Colston has been for Kansas State tonight. Two right. young men that have just been exceptional. Looks up the middle. Pass is intercepted at the 30 by Elton Davis. So he moves back. He got a good double coverage on number seven, Tyson Swiger, for the interception. Seam sink, number 22, Elton Davis. Great shape for the interception. Boy, that is that is really pretty. First time for the freshman, his first career interception. So 11-49. Left in the ball game. Blitz is coming. Pass is tipped and almost intercepted. Right back by Laird Beach. He already has one. You can bet one thing. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, linebacker coach, and Tom Osborne over at Nebraska are watching this game and what K-State is doing on defense because Nebraska runs a similar defense, an eight-man front defense. They can get in the same kind of style of defense next week against Colorado. So this will be a good tape for the Nebraska coaches. Beach looking back over his shoulder, making the defensive call. Second and 10. Tied at 21. Colorado and K-State. Pass caught by 
and Salam, and he's going to be tackled at the 32. Veach is the man who got out there to make the stop. A nice job defensively by K-State. And it's going to be third down. Excuse me, Ron. Bill Snyder wants the lineman downfield here because he thought maybe the ball was thrown. It's a screen pass. It's a double screen. He's going to fake both ways. To the right, it's covered. To the left, it's covered. Now, see the linemen are downfield. Now, if this ball is thrown behind, behind the line of scrimmage, they can go downfield. If it was not, the lineman would be downfield on the pass. Mike, I think it's a good call by the officials because what it looked like, it was like a half yard to a yard behind where the line of scrimmage was. Pressure up the middle. Stewart delivers the ball. Fourier, his big tight end, close to the first down at the 39-yard line. Well, they just keep heating up this Colorado offense. Chuck Marlowe on a blitz that time, 21. Well, the fans don't like don't like where the ball was placed down. They're going to bring in the chains, but it certainly would appear from our vantage point that he doesn't have it. And as a head coach, when that chain's going out, you're hoping he makes it because you don't want to make this call right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not right now. No, he doesn't have it. Now, do you go for it, Bill McCartney, or do you punt the football and play defense? Thank you. Can you really afford to go for it here? Well, if you do, you're saying you're giving your offense a lot of confidence. Because they are going for it, so yeah. there's a lot of confidence in it. K-State, you're talking about the biggest play of this ball game. And Miller will check into the ball game. They line him up at uh, like a fullback position. I always felt at home that you take a quarterback sneak on this and hope you get the call. You're at home, so and they make them work. Ryan Stoltenberg out of the huddle and on to the football. Miller does line up as the fullback, 37. Straight ahead, Stewart, and I think he got it. Sure looks like it. Got behind Stoltenberg, Irwin, and Nioli and just pressed it forward. And Bill can breathe again. <laughs> Colston is down at the bottom of that pile. You know, everybody in the stands has said, yeah, we knew it, we called it, that's what we would have done. But boy, if they hadn't have made it, Bill would have been the biggest bum in the world. Why would they do that? That now? would have been a call, the first call in the press conference. <laughs> Why did you go for it with over 10 minutes left? a little bit that you go for a fourth down and pick it up then right away you come back and you get a big play with Cordell Stewart Mike and I think well we'll have to look at the replay I think it was Marlowe though who rather than making Stewart commit he came at him and then backed off and the contained man didn't know if he, what he was going to do so he left him an avenue Vaskaritskian with the extra point and the Buffaloes go on top with 10 minutes left to play Sports riders. Ever wonder how they pick football's national champion? It's a highly scientific process. <laughs> it's time to settle it on the field. Introducing college football's national championship by Sega Sports. 32 top college teams going head to head. No sports riders, just great football action. College football's national championship, only on Sega Genesis. There's a place near you where the mountain climbers never touch the ground. Where the bodies are made of iron and the bikes of titanium alloy. 
It's Performance Bicycle Shop with over 6,000 square feet of high-tech cycling gear. But if you go, bring a stump-jumping spirit and your Visa card. Because at Performance, they take cycling to the extreme, but they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. So, what do you think? You look tough to me. You just don't see that these days. I'm impressed. I want those qualities on our team. You think we can get them? Let's go ask. Hey, that's how he said scout. Could you come over here a second, son? Yeah, you. Is this show, baby? Could you turn around? You know if these sweats come in teal? Is that seam double-stitched? Do you like the way it flows? Looking for tough athletic wear? Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Flexible. Flexible. Rick Neuheisel on the Colorado sideline and talking with the offensive players as a Cordell Stewart, uh, Mike actually got a little bit of a break as far as the way the play was, uh, was played, which we'll show you just a moment. Well, really, when you look at it, you're right, Marlo, uh, Chuck Marlowe was kind of in Never Neverland because really they're a man short over there, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, they, they, even if Cordell Stewart doesn't carry for a touchdown, he kicks out to Salam, and he's got a long game. Okay, let's, let's take a look at this touchdown play and see the binder in. So credit Yelly Uslak here. here. Here's a block here, block here. Now I'm going to stop it when we get out here on the option with Chuck Marlowe. All right, let's let her go now. Here's the option starts now. So every stop it right here now. Everybody is sealed inside. Now there's a receiver outside, but Marlowe has to play the quarterback or the pitch. He's wrong either way. See if he if he plays the pitch, he plays Never Neverland. The quarterback runs it forever. Maybe we'll come back with that in a second and show you the rest of it. So K State down by seven points again. Pressure from behind. He's sacked by Greg Jones. Shaken up four times that he's been sacked in the ball game. And hurriedly on the sideline, Matt Miller is warming up again. Here's the hit right here, and he never saw Greg Jones. We mentioned four times he's been sacked tonight, and May is going to have to be helped off the field. He's favoring that right leg. Okay, Ron, we're going to go back and look at that touchdown play again. We were talking about Marlowe. Matt okay. Miller. Sorry. Okay, here's the play now. Stop it right here. See, Marlowe makes the play on the quarterback, but if that ball was pitched out, you've got a block here, you've got a block here, so Salam goes the rest of the way. So they're a man short on that play. New quarterback, new cadence, a lot of noise. And as you could see, the receiver, that wouldn't have even worked in Canada. He was five yards across the line of scrimmage. Fourth quarter, if you've just joined us, Colorado 28 and K-State 21. Good ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Miller, as we mentioned, out of San Diego, California, 6'1", 205, and on the sideline, they are working, and you can tell, boy, he's really in pain on that, on that right knee. Gets it complete to lock it. And he's going to be ridden down at the 17-yard line by Simmons. All these K-State receivers can catch the football. Good hands on this group of receivers. So 
all started with the Nebraska game because Nebraska really blitzed him, and you see the same kind of pressure tonight. Sacked four times, hurried 13, knocked down five times. And here's that quarterback draw. And Miller's going to take it, not quite enough for the first down, but he's going to take it out to the 27-yard line, and Ted Johnson will have the answer defensively. So, K-State will have to punt. Mike, this is only the first punt for K-State in the second half of this football game. They've had great field position all night, Ron. So, Eric Hardy to punt it. Chris Hudson standing back at the CU 35. Turn on, and this one's returnable. Line drive kick. And it'll be stopped short of the 45-yard line. So the Buffalo defense, as Eckler makes the tackle on the sideline, and they have done their job in the early going of the fourth. State Farm presents the rules of the game. We're talking about late hits. In this play, a runner is down followed by a clip. What is the penalty? As soon as the State Farm customer calls with a claim, I'm right on the phone to our claim center. We work as partners. Nancy gives me the information, then I contact our customer. We've settled hundreds of claims together. John's attitude is... You've got to be quick, and you've got to be fair. Quick and fair. At State Farm, teamwork is what it's all about. We make a great team. And like a good name, We're talking about late hits. In this play, the offensive team clipped after the runner was down. Assess a 15-yard penalty against the offense from the spot where the run ended. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You're the defending ladies pool champion? Yes, I am. Next Saturday at 7, Eric Zier and the Georgia Bulldogs battle the Florida Gators, only on ESPN. Family weekend here at Boulder, Colorado, and filled to capacity, they say this is always the toughest ticket of the entire season. And I'll tell you what, they have gotten their money's worth so far in this one. As the Buffs lead it by seven points, and K-State has played them just as tough or tougher than anybody this year. Salam, going to be tripped up at the line of scrimmage. That's Beach, who knocked his feet out from under him. Mike Adamley, what do you got uh, for us, sir? Well, Chad May has a hyperextension of his right knee. The training staff has just applied a a brace, a knee brace, to give him a little more stability. Bill Snyder walked over to talk to Chad to see if he was okay. He in no way wants to jeopardize his star quarterback. It looks like Chad may go in the next Kansas State series. Ron, that quarterback's been getting knocked around all year. Dave Barr, California, Rob Johnson, USC, Steve Gunstrom, and Stanford. Quarterbacks in college ball this year have been hurt. Well, Barker got the shoulder three weeks ago. Didn't know if he was going to play. Salam. Tried to turn the corner. He picked up a couple, but uh, Chuck Marlowe was out there to usher him out of bounds. You know, Mike, since the long run in the first half, you can't say that Salam has been a non-factor, but he has not been the huge part of this ball game that, uh, that he was in the early going. And you thought he was going to have another 300-yard night. You know, it's very clear what Key State is trying to do. They're trying to stop the running game, force them to throw the football, and they have, have had a great defensive plan. The only play they have not been able to stop is the option into the short side of the field. 
Yeah, he's picked up over 70 yards in the second half, but it has not come as big as this fellow has come up with big yardage. And Stewart's going to have the first down. Sublet defensively got a part of him. And it looks like Dirk Oaks is shaken up. The defensive end, there he comes hobbling off the field for K-State. Clock now, about to go under six minutes left in this football game. You can bet that unless he has to, Bill McCartney has no interest in uh, putting the ball up in the air. Just keep giving it to number 19 or, or let Cordell Stewart continue to work his magic. And that is the first one to Salon. On this first down, takes it to the 41, Laird Beach. Well, don't forget, coming up tomorrow, NFL game day. At uh, noon Eastern time, they'll discuss the Raiders' uh, offensive uh, power and also the compelling look at post-concussion syndrome. And then at 7 o'clock Eastern time, NFL primetime, Berman, Roberts, and Jackson, wall-to-wall -wall highlights all tomorrow here on ESPN. Noon and then at 7 o'clock Eastern. New piece of equipment and a brace on his right knee. Salon put a head down and is close to getting the first down. Sublet the first man to get there. And it just put him over 200 yards for the night, Mike. Well, he's in the Heisman race. Having an outstanding season, 202 yards tonight, and he's earned them all. Except for the long run he had, just like you said a minute ago, he has worked against an eight-man front all evening. I, I guess I should, you know, restate. I didn't mean to make it sound like, you know, he hasn't contributed. But since that 53-yard run, he really has had difficult yards. His K-State's made it very rough on him. Quarterback sneak will get the first. Stoltenberg, they just got behind him and took it right on across the 35-yard line. Colorado's always sold their players on the fourth quarter as yours because the high altitude conditioning the weight strength program they have here with Doc Priest supposed to be one of the finer strength coaches in the country Bill McCartney sells his team on the fourth quarter is ours and you know something Mike interestingly enough though this is only the third time in seven ball games that this unit has still been in in the fourth quarter because they've had so many blowouts so uh, this is probably good for them as well gets by the pressure and then is going to be hit in the open field by McEwen. The junior out of Belleville, Kansas, and Matt makes the stop there. Now Wyron, number 44, really blew this play up from the start because he was able to get penetration on Cordell Stewart and force him out of his option lane, made him get depth. Now if you're Bill McCartney, you're thinking field goal, you want to run the clock, you want to put some points on the board, you want to put this thing away now. Sideline, you can see that Johnson is is uh, giving some rehearsal snaps to Chad May from that uh, shotgun formation. Salon tried to reverse his field. He's going to be wrapped up. That's Mario Smith, number four. Sublet came over to help, but it was uh, Smith who grabbed him first. And then Salam comes up, and he didn't like either the way he was hit or something that was said. And Bill Snyder is going to use his timeouts. He knows he's down to 337 on the clock. Here's the cutback. It's tough to cut back against an eight-man front. Mario Smith, number four, makes the play, but there's just too many bodies up at the line of scrimmage to cut back that far and laterally. So we'll take a timeout. 337 left in our game. Colorado by seven. I read Amendment 1. I wondered whether we were being fair to smokers. But that's just one of the problems with Amendment 1. You see, the people who wrote Amendment 1 made sure that no one, not the governor, not the legislature, not even the voters, could control how the money spent. And some of the money would go to people who helped write Amendment 1. $128 million to some of the same people who helped write it, with no controls. That's a big problem. But don't take my word for it. Call for a copy and read it yourself. I'm Mike. And I'm Mike. If you're considering a new BMW, we invite you to join our team at Gebhardt Imports. Mike, 
Our pledge to you is a relaxed, informative atmosphere, making your BMW purchase a special occasion. Mike? Part of our team is our service department, whose goal is complete satisfaction for your ownership experience. So this is Mike. And Mike. Join our team at Gebhardt's. Discover the difference our experience makes. So we're back with just over three and a half minutes left in this one. 28-21. Bill Snyder's crew has come in here from Manhattan and just played a whale of a football game against number three ranked Colorado. But the Buffs own the football right now and it's third down and 11. and they sack him. Eckler. Well, that play blew up from the start, too. There was something wrong with that play unless it was going to be a shovel draw to Rashawn Salam, but number 29, Mike Eckler, never let it develop. K-State has just called their second timeout. They have one left, so we're going to go away with them. 323 remaining. It has an abundant number of safety components, including dual airbags with terminals plated in gold to protect against corrosion, steel guard beams in all four doors, and crumple zones built into its structure. In an image is everything world, we proudly present the substance is everything car. Introducing the new Maxim from Nissan. Today, it's not just how well you make your product, it's how fast you get it to market. It's about time, get there first. It's about air, get there first. It's about time. We're AMP. Wherever you are, we are. As the world leader in electronic interconnection systems, nobody can touch us. It's about AMP. AMP. Get there first. Whenever there's a day, there's always the night. Whenever there's love, there's always the moonlight. The stars will always shine. The birds will always sing. Whenever there's thirst, there's always Coca-Cola. Andy Mitchell prepares to punt his ball club up by 7, 28-21. And Mitch running is the lone safety for K-State. Mike, they got one earlier tonight, blocked by Marlowe, number 21. See if they come after him again. And they're coming after him, but he gets it away. End over end. Going to bounce and touch dead at the three-yard line. Steve Roscoe. Visa players of the game are for Kansas State. Chad May, his numbers 23 of 36, 356 yards. And for Colorado, Rashawn Salam, his numbers on the evening, over 200 yards, or let's make it exactly 200 yards. As a part of their continued effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these universities. And I'm sure Mike Hankowitz saw the, the knee brace that uh, Chad Mays wearing, so he can't have a lot of mobility there in the, in the uh, quarterback position, so they're not going to roll him out, so now's the time to blitz him. Well, Mike, the toughest thing right here in the bowl part of the stadium, that's the student section right there behind and to the side of him. 
J.J. Smith tries to turn the corner and gets out of bounds. So that stops the clock at uh, 10. And that's Russell. He was out there to make the hit. Matt Russell has also played very well defensively for Colorado tonight. He's only a sophomore. Fairview Heights, Fairview Heights Illinois. There he is. 62-235. They run it again, and J.J. Smith just could not get away from Shannon Cavell and Matt Russell. I said it earlier, the strength of this Colorado defense, those three down linemen, Kerry Hicks, Shannon Clavell, and Darius Holland. As you see, Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, making the defensive call. Breaks off one tackle and lunges forward as Matt Russell has him in his grasp, but he'll have the first down. Good patience by Bill Snyder. Three straight runs, picks up the first down, moves the chains, 2.19 on the clock, and he has one timeout left. Drills the ball. It is incomplete as Brown got sandwiched at the 40. He rocked the number 15, really, as the player that knocked the ball away from Ron Brown. Ron Brown had this ball in his hands, but a great defensive play by Steve Roska. Number 15 is going to make the hit right here. Dislodging from the football. Also, Dalton Simmons round in on the play. Showing some mobility with that uh, knee brace on. Now he's going to be hit as he delivers it incomplete. Like is who he wanted. Daryl Price is the man who finally got to him. Well, he was smacked by Daryl Price, too. Daryl Price didn't give up. He's fresh. He just came into the ball game. We're going to see the end of the play. Daryl Price now. He's fresh. Really levels Chad May. down to six, now down to five. Rosgood is the closest man to that as Brown was in the vicinity. So it's fourth and ten with the 151 showing on the clock. What you have here now Kevin Lockett is telling Bill Snyder a play that he feels like that he's open on. Now Lockett's going to the quarterback, Chad May, to tell him. Mike, Chad May, 0 for 6 with a flush from the pocket tonight. The numbers we have. Let's see if he goes to Kevin Lockett here. in the third quarter. The team back to haunt K-State. Salam 
Bloom hit in the backfield and knocked down Tim Colston again. Also, McEwen was there. Pay a little more tribute to, to Colston here. I know the player of the game was, uh, was Chad May, but Mike defensively, Colston deserves some kind of uh, recognition, and I'm sure he'll get it from the defensive coaches. As you look at the offensive players on the bench, defense for Colorado has, uh, has done an outstanding job. Colston tonight for K-State has, has been the fella. Salam. It's Colston again. <laughs> so there's a timeout with 57 seconds left. K-State uses their final one to stop the clock just under a minute to play. Well, this is the way it stands right now. Obviously, Colorado will go to 3-0 heading into that game with, uh, with Nebraska next week. Michael, how do you see that matchup between Nebraska and Colorado? Well, I think Colorado is going to see the same kind of defense they saw tonight in that ball game against Nebraska. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They're going to make him try to beat him throwing the ball. They're going to try to shut down Rashawn Salam. But uh, again, I, you got to credit K State tonight with a very good plan. And I, I, I just think it's going to be a good football game over there next week. And no, Tommy Frazier's not playing in the ball game. But uh, Nebraska will be ready, and it'll be a fine football game. And now, of course, they have had time to to grow confident with with other people running at that position. He came to Colorado, Ron. Uh, you know, he, here, he made Nebraska his big game, and they had not had a lot of success here at Colorado against Nebraska. 2-2-1 two, two and one against Nebraska, the rest of the Big Eight, you see the statistics, but he's played Nebraska pretty even over the last five, six years. as they try to cross him up a little bit and give the ball to him, first man through. Chad Mayer with Brad Jim sitting on the sideline and realizing that this one is ticking away and not, not much that anybody can do now. They'll have to snap it, Colorado will, one more time, and uh, that is it. Coming up next, the Residence Inn scoreboard. And now a timeout called by Colorado. Residents in college football school board coming up next here on ESPN. You know, people all over the country are trying to make decisions on who's number one. There's a lot of good football teams, but you go back to Colorado's schedule. I think they played all comers. When you looked at them at the beginning of the season, you knew they had a tough schedule. Penn State's got an outstanding football team. They're off today. They get Ohio State next week at uh, Penn State. So some interesting things the rest of the way, Ron. And there's some other ball clubs. Auburn doing very well. Alabama's still undefeated. Nebraska, Tom Osborne will await this Colorado football team. And you can't leave out Utah. No, what a huge win for those people today, and they had to do it on the road. And you know how good Colorado State can be because they handled an awfully good undefeated at the time Arizona team uh, in Tucson. So uh, I guess also you have to say hats off to the WAC and the kind of season that they've had. An excellent season, and you, and you can't really throw sand on the Florida team yet either. No. Because it's not over no. for them either. There's three good football teams down there that by a quirk of fate might get a shot at this thing yet. 14 seconds left. 28-21. Looks for the end zone. Now he's going to run it. And he'll score.
little surprised that Colorado didn't just run it into the line there rather than uh, what they did. I think what they were doing, Ron, is trying to run a play where it would take a lot of time, and I don't think they really felt like they would score the touchdown. That's a play designed to take some time, and he didn't throw the ball in, and he, he did run the ball in, but it was a play to kill the clock. So eight seconds left, and Colorado now 35 to 21. Here's the play, Cordell Stewart. There's 15 seconds. They're just trying to kill the clock. Open receivers in the end zone. He just fakes it. He's open to run it in for the touchdown. So Chad May with eight seconds left, they will uh, get one last shot offensively unless something strange happens and uh, they get caught on the return to, to run out the clock. Can't throw enough uh, compliments to Kansas State also. I know you feel the same way. Bill Snyder. Both these guys have really uh, brought back programs here. Bill at Colorado and Bill Snyder at Kansas State. And even though they lost this football game 35-21, I mean, a great effort by their football team tonight. And they're playing run. Nebraska, Colorado, Oklahoma, That's all three in a row. I mean, you, That's right. I'll tell you what, I don't know what team in the country uh, for the last five, five, six years can play that role. J.J. Well, Smith's going to try to bring it out now. Passes it across to Ron Brown. And they're not going to get out of bounds in time, and the clock will run out. So the final score, Buffalo's win it, 35 to 21 for Mike Godfrey and Mike Adamley. Ron Franklin saying so long from Boulder. Now let's go to Chris Fowler. Thank you, Ron. An enjoyable ball game as Colorado pulls a third game out this season in the final minutes. It sets.